What a night, what a fight, man. This was a good card right here, yo. This was a damn good card. Shout out to the zone and Matron Boston for putting this on and Mexico for the people of Mexico. Shout out to the, the Mexican fans. They turned up and turned out. Man, this was a legendary night for uh this young man right here. Got his first world title. Sure, we're gonna see a lot more of him. We're gonna talk about that. I got this uh as fight of the year, early candidate right here. One mind seeing again. I know one guy face looked more worse, you know. Uh my man look uh, a little more beat up on the side right here. But trust me, um, this was a close fight. This shit could have went either way. So we're gonna talk about all of this and more. It's your man Martinez breaking beats. Let's get it, baby. This is my passion, this is what I love to do. But some days, sometimes I'm just like you, man. I hate this job. Damn, 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 I hate this job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. I'm just like you, like you, like you. Damn, I hate this job. Man, I hate this job. Man, I hate my job. From a good dream, I wake. Sun rays on my face. Planning out my day, hoping this ain't the one that I catch a case. I feel so good, I feel so straight. My manager keep calling me, saying, hurry up, you late. Hurry up, you lay off y'all. Man, I hate this job. Man, man, I hate this job. Been trying to play it cool, but it's hard to play it off. I've been hanging on to this bush, cause my car still ain't paid off. I know I'm on my way up. My boy just got laid off, so fuck y'all. Man, I hate this job. Man, man, I hate this job. These hooks is so ratchet. These hooks is so sneaky. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't even really pay enough for y'all to only pay bi weekly. I'm trying to double up my cash. Take this job, shove it up your ass. Yo, yo, man, I hate this job Sometimes I wanna say fuck it, walk in and slap my boss This shit is getting hard Damn, 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 I hate this job Gotta make it out of this struggle, bruh And I don't really mean to take it out on you You just a customer, but damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate my job Damn, I hate this job Damn, 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 I hate my job Damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate my job Damn, I hate this job With the reason why your stockholders always stay afloat Yet I'm asking, are they hiring? Like everywhere I go, schedule will say nine But I think it's fine if I clock in at 904 I work 40 hours a week plus overtime Just to be bro, so f*** y'all, man, I hate this job Hate, hate that I applied So much has transpired since the day that I was high Told me I could advance, but you were telling me lies Gotta give your notice before I quit But you don't say shit right before I'm fired Damn, man, I hate this job Sometimes I wanna say get walk in and slap my boss This shit is getting hard Damn, 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 I hate this job Gotta make it out of this struggle, bruh And I don't really mean to take it out on you You just a customer, but damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate my job Damn, I hate this job Damn, damn, I hate my job Damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate this job Damn, I hate my job Damn, I hate this job you and your procedures, you and your protocol, you and your policies, none that shit don't apply to me. You and your quotas, you and your standards, you and your two sick days a year. Y'all niggas bananas, wonder why the postman's posted with hammers, going postal with Popo on camera. His wage got him enraged, stressed out, it's hard to maintain. He flips the metal, grabs his he said, if you don't get the picture, bitch, I quit. You ain't shoot, mother of man. I hate this job. Sometimes I wanna say, get walk in and slap my boss. This shit is getting hard. Damn, 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 I hate this job. Gotta make it out of this struggle, bro. And I don't really mean to take it out on you. You just a customer, but damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate. Job. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you. I'm out here trying to take care of my family. Damn, 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 I hate this job. It's not always glamorous, for real. But I do what I gotta do for me and mine, you know? Damn, 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 damn I hate this job. Damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate my job. Damn, I hate this job. Damn, I hate this job. Man, I hate this job. Man, I hate my 
Roger. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers, commentators, experts, and or the hosts. They do not explicitly nor necessarily reflect nor represent the channel's policy or the views held by the channel or broadcaster. The broadcaster or its channel cannot be held accountable for all or any views expressed during the program. Basically, if I didn't say it, don't come for me. You come for the person who said it. And please don't sue me for somebody else's words. With that said, let's start the show, mother. What up, 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 though? What's popping? What's happening? What's going on? You back in the lab with your favorite neighbor, your man Mark Nash. He is I, I am he. Another great episode of Breaking Beast. Viva la Meco. Let's say that again. Wow, man. Mexico put on for the city tonight. Oh, man, put on for the country. The ladies was, this was a whitewash cruise. Won every round on all three cards, and she won every round on mine too to retain her title. Um, in this rematch, no excuses. Uh, yo, no excuses. Um, she lost. She lost every round. I know the last fight she said her trainer had died. I get it. No excuses this time. My buddy right here already pulling them right here. Now I'm just. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. What a night! What a fight! Mexico showed out. And the fights were so exciting, leaves this YouTuber asking the question, should more Americans implement the Mexican style to have more, quote unquote, exciting fights? I mean, a lot of skill was displayed tonight. It wasn't just uh, how they say rock em, sock em robots. Definitely a lot of skill in that ring tonight. Shout out to Mexico again. <laughs> Uh, what a fight! What a fight! What a fight! Shout out to Mexico. Uh, talk to me, clips. What you think of the uh, what you think of the event, man? Your mic's muted. There you go. Okay, yeah, I actually didn't see it. That's why I'm tapping in to see what's going on. Um, glad to see that it was a great fight card from what everyone's saying, and um, I'm, I'm excited to hear about it now. Um, as far as your question or the greater topic of the show. Wow, that's interesting. I know this is going to be a great show. And um, um, you said a Mexico showed out tonight. That's great. Um, real briefly, not to change the subject, shout out to the country of France who showed their whole ass for the UFC t- um, earlier uh, this uh, today. Um, that Gano uh, Tui fight was great and all the fights I've seen. So shout out to all the countries showing out and showing their national pride the right way in the ring or in the octagon. Yeah, man. Great, great, great night of boxing. Shout out to Breaking Beats. That's where we at, Rob G. Hey, Rob G, why you keep shouting out that other channel on my, on my live, bro? Like, like that's like the third day in a row. I mean, you know you my man 50 grand, but like, you kind of, yeah, why we doing that, Rob G? You know we don't do that over here. Rock with me. Yeah, you know where you at? Breaking Beats, homie. I don't even know that guy that he always shouting out in my chat. Like, I don't want to delete it, but I'm probably going to delete it. Like, what we doing here, Rob G? Come on, man. I want to put you on the spot, but keep doing that like, uh he said because he just passed this week okay i'm sorry god bless the dead i didn't know him though and uh, i didn't know he passed i didn't yo you was trying to um set up us to do an interview too um uh, damn i didn't know he passed away i wish i would have got to meet the brother rest in peace to the homie though rest in peace yes. okay. I, yeah yeah i get it though add some contest to it like i get yeah r.i.p to look out r.i.p to the homie damn he ain't died no car accident did he 
I know he did racing. He didn't die in a car accident, did he, Rob G? He said, uh, but if you don't want me to, it's all good. I dip out or I'll call it. No, it's all good. Like, you can be here. I just, you know, I don't be promoting other people's channels in my lives. Like, why? Especially if I don't know him. But if he died, I get it. RIP to the homie. But did he die in a car accident? I hope he didn't die in a car. Um, Piero, I need you on this panel, baby. Mexico. Mexico came and represented. He said, I just tried to call you. Um, let me see. Let me see. I'll get it straight. I'll get it straight. Bear with me, Rob G. Set the phone line up because we are going to take some calls. Immediate reaction. Um, Clips didn't see the fight. I need somebody uh, to call in or talk to me who see all the fights. This shit was good, man. This guy right here from South Africa, um, young brother, man. Went in there and got busy. I thought it was going to try to take it from him at one point because the fight was kind of close. But um, the special one was not having it, man. He he did everything he was supposed to do tonight. Went in there and kicked some ass, took some names. Um, man, like this guy was this guy was good, man. This fight right here, Flores versus, versus uh, uh, how you say his name? Not not Shinga. Nashinga, Flores versus Nashinga is, is definitely going to be nominated for fight of the year. Mark my words. Mark my words. This shit right here, Clips, if you didn't see this fight, go back on the zone, go on YouTube, wherever they're going to have this fight at, and okay. read the fight. Oh, my God. Rob G, he said, uh, he said you tried to call. Uh, I just tried to call. Try to call again, Rob G. 470-705-9507. make sure I got everything open. Hey, judging by that post-fight picture with them side by side, it looks like the uh the Mexican fighter, sure enough, he uh he sure enough didn't see a right hand he didn't want to eat. And uh yeah, looking at the that South African brother's face, it seems like that left overhand was uh finding its mark on him. He man, he was so exhausted though, bro. They both were exhausted. I gotta look at the punch stats for this, man. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if they threw 2,000 punches this, tonight, man, between the two of them. Like, it was nonstop. The whole the whole card. The whole damn card. Mexico! Viva la Mexico! <laughs> Mexico put on for the city. What's up, Rob G? Yo, what's up, Mark? What's going down? Yeah, man, sorry for the loss of your friend, bro. I didn't know, man. I was yeah. Just Right yeah, 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 yeah. No, because I noticed uh, last time I put look at look at you said break a beat, break a beat. Absolutely. I was yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. No, most definitely. Yeah. But uh, but no, I didn't know he passed away. What happened to him? So he died in a motorcycle accident. Oh, uh, that was what my worst fear was right there. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, I, I kind of just do that as a uh, it, it, it's almost because uh, I'm not trying oh, to shout out his channel, but that's kind of like much. I get it, I get it. it it's kind of like a greeting, bro. Like. Every time he would greet someone and say, hey, look out, look out, look out. So it ain't really like, you know, trying to shout out his channel because obviously he's not even here no more. So yeah, it's just, it, 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 it's so when I come in, I just say, hey, what up, look up. And so that, that's I, really all it is. Because re real talk, bro, I, I, uh, I was watching his channel for about a year and a half, probably a little bit longer than yours. And uh, I never met you before, but I fucks with you. So you know what I mean? You can, you can really fuck with people through this digital world. So uh, that, that's really all I'm doing is I'm just, like I said, just paying homage. So I ain't trying to shout out no one's channel, but good, like, bro. Re, re, real talk, man, yeah. no one even really knows what that is. Only you do because we tried to set up an interview, and I wish yeah. we would have got that shit set up. But Damn, man. It's unfortunately, all you know what I mean? So, hey, that's what it is. But uh, I don't want to sidetrack off that, but no, it, it was a good night of fights. I caught a little bit of them because I was kind of doing some other stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, exciting, exciting. Uh yeah, that's all I got. Man, did you see? Did you see uh, Flores versus uh, what's the young man on the new champ? Um, not how you say his name. We got to learn his name. Nashatinga from South Africa. No, nah, I didn't see that one. I was uh, doing something else at that time. Possible I, fight of the year, bro. Like they had like how many title? Like three or four title fights on this card tonight, and they yeah. fought in Mexico. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I noticed that. I said, damn, I didn't even realize it was all these champions fighting on the card. And uh, I can't even remember the last time they did a, a card in Mexico, but, you know, that's dope. Man, salute to Mexico, man. Um, So I got a topic on the docket. I know it's going to make some of my brothers mad. No, but, hey, yeah, I, I got an answer for that. Uh, Talk to me. 
So, so I think uh, as far as that goes, because you said something about should, should uh, black fighters change to Mexican style. I, you know, in my opinion, man, I think all that went, every time you bring like race into this shit, I think it's a bunch of bullshit. I think uh, just fight how you feel comfortable fighting and, and what you think is going to benefit you regardless of your race. Like just, just fight your fight and, and, and fuck all that race shit. So that's the way I look at it. But but in this climate we are, it's 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 not just about winning. Like you need to look at sighting. You need to put asses in seat. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I agree with that. Well, I'm just referring because you because you had listed black fighters, so that's that's why I, Mexican style. So uh, I'm referring to that. I'm referring to the title. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because the African American style is considered more of a quote unquote, I guess, slick style. That's why I put it in quotations too. Mexican style and more exciting fights well i think you see i think uh i think i think that's just all like i think that's just haters that like a certain style mm -hmm. so they're gonna hate on certain styles so you might have you might have people that like the slick style and they might call mexican style rock'em soccer then you might have people that like the mexican style they might call the slick style running so it's all just a way to Go go against whatever style you don't like. I think there's all different styles. There's different ways to do it. Just do what benefits you and what you like to do. Fuck all that race shit. That's the way I look at it. My man said it's five nineteen in the morning over there. He said, and I'm awake as fuck, ready for another. He said, what a, what another great card from the zone? Absolutely. Yeah. Um. I I, I kind of I kind of in a weird way. Um. I agree with Rob with very little caveats, if any, because I do think that uh, it's more um, these are more like dog whistle words that we like to use for um, when we watch the sport, because we've seen Mexican fighters be technical, but maybe because they're Mexican is still viewed as pressure fighting. But no, he wasn't going in there, Billy Golden and just chasing dude down. He was actually fighting the fight, but, you know, he was given a high punch volume. And then we've seen black fighters who give a high punch volume, but he's still very skillful. He's still, um, let's call it Mayweather-ish, and he's not going to get hit in return in a lot to where all these people who want to see a Mickey Ward or Turo Gotti style fight where they just sit there and try to kill each other, like, no, you're not going to see that. And so the first thing they want to do is they want to try to ra uh, ra uh, make it racial and be like, well, this is a Mexican style or this is a black style. I agree with that comment that Rob G said. It's like, you're you true. have your different styles and your different fighters. But Clips, I didn't invent the term Mexican. No, style. you didn't. Yeah. What's up, <laughs> Anthony Alexander in the building? Anthony Alexander, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, sir. So, Mark Nash. Talk to um, me, man. These fights, Anthony. Yes, yes. Straight out West LA. Uh, hey, I, let's go I, LA. I, yes, sir. Uh, I feel like um, black style is every style. Got from Devin Haney to Deontay Wilder to Javante yeah. Davis to Andre Ward. You have all types of different styles. And uh, it might sound a little arrogant, but I feel like the black fighting style is every style. It's the best style. Because <coughs> we okay. got brawlers today and we got technical technicians. I mean, interesting. Interesting. Um, fighter tonight for you. Uh, fight night was, uh, I was on UFC, unfortunately. Okay. I saw the highlights of the Mexican War. I love that. And, um, I just feel like, uh, I mean, pick your poison. If you want brawling, holla at Deontay Wilder. And people love to criticize his style, but I feel like it's kind of a Mexican style, which is all guts glory. I got to put a case, and, uh, bro. All right. All right. That, that thing like is more, Deontay style thing like is, he don't, I don't see the pressure, uh, the, uh, the Mexican style in Deontay Wilder. I see uh, one punch, I'm going for one kill. Uh, you said Deontay Wilder has a Mexican style to you. Uh, describe that to me. I didn't say he has like he has like a quote unquote style that is a uh, rough and rugged and uh, just goes straight to you. That's what I feel. And I don't say Javante is a Mexican style. I don't believe any of these fighters Mexican style, but they have that aggressive style. So I mean, it's not just a uh, all black fighters aren't just like technicians. You know, that's really good. Maybe Sean and, Porter has more of you what we would call a Mexican style, right? There you go. But he doesn't have any pop in his hands. But... It's Sean Porter. That's actually a good call, Mark. Good call, Sean Porter. Yeah, there you go. Talk to me. I got my boy HLD in the building. HLD, what up? What's going on? What a night, HLD. 
Go Man, it, it it was it, I wasn't expecting this. You know what I mean? It, it was not a it was not promoted as what it was, man. It was a great night of boxing. Hey, hey, hey! This is off topic, but hey, I, I really like HLD's logo. That shit's dope. I yeah. appreciate. It didn't always look like that. He upgraded a while ago, and I I told him as soon as I said that shit is fire. Yeah, I, I like that. It's like a monogram. Yeah, he had a picture of himself at first and eating some donuts looking. <laughs> no, nah, man, it, it was one of the black and white with just uh, black letters. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with you. But HD, go ahead. So um, we was talking about uh, the topic on the docket. You know, Martin, that's what they're going to say. You always make it a racial, huh? You got a little racial. I like a little racial conversation in every now and then. Yeah, one, well. I'm going to avoid it. They call it Mexican style, right? It's called a Mexican style of boxing. It was a yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a regional that. style of boxing. From the, I mean, you can say that, uh, if, you know, that they predominantly use that pressure style of fighting. Do you think more Americans um, should implement that style to have more exciting fights? I know you was going uh, Well, to if, if we're talking about exciting fights, well, uh, yeah. It, it, look, at this, this was not like a superstar studded <laughs> uh, 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 card. But they made it fucking exciting. I mean, who, 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 everybody was loving this shit. You know, I mean, here we are. We're talking about a card that was not promoted. We're, we're acting like this was one of the, you know, $75, $80 pay per view uh, you know, cards, and it, and it wasn't. You know, so uh, I, I think it just it, it does get to a, uh, a more exciting uh, bang for your buck entertainment. Um, but you know, as far as uh, I, I mean, I don't know what where we're trying to compare it to because I mean, if we're comparing it to uh, Devin Haney, May, May, Mayweather, he wasn't he was a slick fighter, but that motherfucker boxed your ass, right? Or or Pernell Whitaker or or Sugar Ray Leonard, and these are slick fighters. Now, if you're trying to, Pretty Boy Floyd was a beast. He was a beast, right? And even though, and even Post, he was still you know fucking counter at you. You know, yeah, he'll fuck you up, right? No one gives no one gives that pretty boy Floyd the credit of the assassin that he was. Oh, he wasn't. He'll get you the fuck out of here, and then so you get mad because at the end of his career, he's like, "No, let me extend these fights and just win the fight." But he went damn near twenty one and zero, getting niggas the fuck out of here. And that's how he had brittle hands. I mean, that's why he changed. But his style. but he Thank was getting, he was getting people out of here still with the slick style fighting, not with this other sh new age shit that we're seeing. See, he was he was in the pocket. But that was the that's that that was the sweet science of boxing. Not this modern day bullshit now that we're seeing with this new generation. I mean, that's just, that's I mean, I mean now, on, now honestly, oh, now oh, with oh, this, I want to hear the rest of this. I want to hear the rest of this real quick, Cliff. Because he whenever HLD start talking like this, and man, I know you spitting all over your mic and your uh your computer screen all over the house right now when you start talking like <laughs> 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 Motherfucking! Oh man, I'm just, I'm just saying that, 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 that let's, let's, let's make this clear. The true sweet science of, of boxing is not boring. All right, it's not boring. Mayweather was not boring, uh, or, or, or Pernell Whitaker, exactly. or Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, I mean, Shakur Stevenson was doing, was starting to go on this new age shit of. Of, of, of I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, but it's not the sweet science to me the, of what I grew up on. And and then after Nakatili, what he he turned it up, he turned it up and he stayed in the pocket, beat your ass, and you ain't touching you still, motherfucker. That's what I want to see. So and that up in weight though, HLD, which made him have more power. No, that was not about power. That was about staying in the pocket, not running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he stayed in the pocket with all that too. So I mean, it's 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 just all right. I'm gonna implement my real skills, which is what he's got, instead of running around. Uh, I never really want to see that. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like Shakur Stevenson. I think he's a he's a good of uh, he's a good defensive style, but he also throws combinations, and that's that's one thing I really like to see. And uh, Mark, whenever we was talking on a on a. Uh, on our members only that's when i was uh, we were talking about like someone that might be born or whatever you know what i'm saying i just like to see combinations i like to see people throw hands versus just jab 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 you know what i'm saying like and i think uh, shakur does that well okay i got my boy puro here puro just got here puro viva la Mega. yo what up Man. Yo, what up what up 
Let's go show it up tonight, man. Yeah, man, there's some good fights on there, man. I was, uh, that was, I was entertained by all of them, yeah. I didn't watch the, the women fight. I'm not a huge uh, woman boxing fan, but I heard it was, I heard it wasn't that good though. You know, I was hearing some some channels, but you know, some channels I don't know what they're looking at. Man, it was a one sided ass whipping. Well, there you go. So <laughs> it was beautiful boxing by Cruz though. She looked amazing. There it is. Playing her title. That was a rematch because uh, I believe the sister, uh, she was fighting. Um, her her trainer died last time. She she. Uh, was prepping for this fight. She didn't. She went into that fight without a trainer. He was actually in the hospital on his deathbed while she was fighting. So she said she wasn't in it. She had Sugar Hill in the corner tonight, and it didn't make no difference. She got to ask. Well, she's also like an old chick. I think she's like thirty nine. She forty, she 40 shorty. Yeah, forty. Yeah, she forty. She yeah. She's the triple G of female body. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised when they said that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go by the by by, by the words of Lou, Lou DeBella. He said, "Put the, put both those girls at the same time in with Serrano, so she could smoke them." <laughs> we, we'll see. Uh, let me ask you: We, we just saw uh, Serrano lose. Uh, yeah, that was a rob. Oh, Some people yeah, say that she won. I didn't watch the whole fight because I was at the Shakur and Valdez fight, but uh, it was entertaining a little bit. I saw. I tell you yeah, what. It was it was an amazing fight, but anyway, that we're we're gonna get off topic though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Piero, the question I got yes, for you right now: Shout out to Matty Yoel. Um, should, should uh more Americans or African Americans implement the Mexican style of boxing, um, to have more quote unquote exciting fights? Well, I, I'll preface my answer starting with this: uh, Mexican style is a marketing ploy that the promoters invented. I don't know when. Um, if you go to my channel, I, I uploaded a video a while back of uh, Marquez explaining um, what he thinks the Mexican style is, and I thought he, uh, he broke it down pretty. Uh, he was on point the way he broke down the the, the style. But yeah, I mean, um, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's just a marketing ploy. Like literally, like the the um, what I would say, what I would say, like think the Mexican style is, it's like a never quit. You know, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, entertain the fans. Obviously, like Mexicans, I always like to entertain their fans because they fight for their fans a lot. You know, and uh, but yeah, I, I just I've never liked the the, the well, I just don't like it now because of the way it's just some people uh, equate Mexican style, which is like rock'em sock'em robots. I forget somebody was saying that, but it's it's a it's a lot more um, it's a, there's a lot more nuances to to what uh, Mexican style is. But uh, Errol Spence fights a quote unquote Mexican style, so I mean he's American. Body shots. Well, well, the guy that won tonight, I think, with the probably the fight of the year, Nashingo was you know he was fighting he was he was fighting toe to toe with. with with Flores and then and he wants him, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flores made him fight that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trying to separate, and he had his best moments when he could jab right hand, um, when he can do some slick shit. Flores kept closing the distance and wouldn't give him a chance to do some of that. Shout out to Mexico, man, drinking the Corona. Drink, drinking the Corona, sipping some tequila, man. Let's go, Mexico. Shit, I'm hype about these fights tonight, man. Man, Mark is such a fan, boy. Look at him. <laughs> All he needs is a sombrero. He needs, that is, no, no. For the, rest of the, no. for the rest of the night, no, Mark. For the rest of the night, your name is Marquez. <laughs> Mar Marquez. I know, bro. The, the trolls were going to start coming in right now, Mark. <laughs> Man, I ain't going to lie. I started to put on my uh, my green um, drinks require your sleeve shirt with the uh, Mexican color hat, the Aerospins Mexican color hat, but I didn't want to wear the Aerospins hat. <laughs> I'll tell you this though, um, true Mexican. If, if you don't, if you don't make fun of uh, of our culture and you like uh, honor it properly, man, they ain't tripping, man. Man, I've been to Mexico several times. I always get treated good in Mexico, all the time. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're, they're hospitable people. I agree. All right, so, so by the title, uh, yeah, there we go. It's Marquez, not Marcus, not Marcos. <laughs> oh yeah, it's Marcos, but Marquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, go ahead. But you said the Mexican style basically is a media ploy, right? Um, exactly, exactly. Do you think this is set up to cause division between um, countries and, I guess, races. Uh, it it ha it has caused division. To to be honest, um, Canelo and, and Triple G is a perfect example because that's how they marketed Triple G, you know. And um, you know, uh, um, so you know, so that it has caused division. But it, it, at the end of the day, I mean, like, uh, if you truly understand that it's just a marketing ploy, I mean, like me, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I don't like it sometimes, but I, I I ain't tripping either. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, in Puerto Rico, you had Hector Macho Camacho, who basically was a slick style fighter, and and then you have Tito Trinidad, who, who yeah, is a pressure fighter, right? So I mean, it, it's it's it, is it is you know what I mean is, is it is it a one a, a one area of of, of, of race thing that that they fight that one? Or just you know, different people. Start to muffle, HRD. Fix your mic. I mean, Canelo fights slick. You yeah. know, <laughs> he's Mexican. You know, so I mean, you know. But people don't like him, though. You said people don't like him in Mexico. Yeah, but that's, I mean, there's, a, it's its not just because of that. You get what I'm saying? You know, there's a lot of lot of shit that goes in, into why, um, you know, the Triple G uh, promotion was one of the well, one of the reasons, you know, why they don't like him and stuff, you know, because they're like, oh, you know, you get what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know, like, uh, people are, are weird, you know, anywhere in, anywhere in the world you go to, you know. I don't know why they like a dude and why they don't like another dude, you know. It's weird, but yeah, but I mean, not just Canelo though. In in the past, there's been I forget if it's uh, Gabby or Orlando Carrizales. I mean, I think he was Mexican American, but he was like the uh, the personification of uh, of slick style. You know, it was really good too. Mm. Yeah, man. But I was gonna say too. I mean, the the um, there's uh, some form of boxing can be boring, you know, um, at times, you know. But also de that also depends. Sometimes um, you, you're kind of so equally matched that like literally they kind of cancel each other out, and you could be in that type of fight where it gets boring. You know, because I, I say Floyd was born in some fights. Uh, let me go to Frank real quick. He just got Let me get his opening statement. And you know, after that, we hey, go, uh, pass it um, Frank, yeah, welcome, welcome go back. Go ahead. I didn't hey, you thank you. Today. Thank you. All right, welcome back. I didn't run you off, so you, you still rocking. <laughs> you kept me on. All right, man. Yeah, hey, look, we ain't got to agree, homie. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Let's go. <laughs> man, what you think of my, uh, the fights tonight? Did you see the fights? Yeah, I did. What's your take? Okay. Um, well, if we're talking about Mexican style, I want to say it's a stereotype, but it it's born out of truth. If all stereotypes have some type of truth attached to it. So having grown up in a Mexican gym, you know, we weren't allowed to clinch. They would they would rope the ring off in half. You had to sit and bang. There was no clutching, there was no grabbing, and people were insulted when I told them that we didn't clutch and they assumed that we didn't know how to box. But it, it comes from temperament and teaching. Okay, so um, did you see the fights tonight? Yeah. Uh, what you think of the fights uh, tonight? I thought it was a. Uh, the last one was a great fight. I, the women's fight I really didn't pay attention to, and the the other little guys were slugging it out. Uh, it's all action. I mean, what more do you want? Right, man. This was quote unquote Mexican style or Mexican boxing at its finest, right? Um, so is that an offensive term when we you saying Mexican style? Is that offensive for, for me? For me, no. And here's the reason. Are you um, oh, hold up. go ahead? Are you Mexican though? I'm Latino, yeah. Okay. Um, and no, it's just the way we grew up. That was what, what they taught in the gym. I was actually more of a slick. I wanted to be a slick fighter, establish my jab, and I was kind of isolated by the by the hardcore Mexicans. They don't respect that. Mm. Okay, pass it around. Anybody got anything they want to add? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Clip. I mean, mind you, that to be a slick fighter, you also have to be uh, having the the natural the natural talents of, of skill. You know what I mean, and and and, and if you're flat footed, I mean, hello, you're not you're not going to be able to be a slick fighter. So it, it it all depends on what are your attributes, what do you got to be able to implement it. Because if, if you know if if if, if you're heavy foot, I mean, how, how the hell are you going to be a, a a slick fighter and 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 have the movement of, of footwork for that? Um, so it all depends, I think, on on, on your natural abilities and which way it, it leads back for you. Yeah, and as you say that, who comes to mind is Teofimo Lopez, and before him, there was a guy, Hector Camacho. Um, Hector Camacho had a really slick style. Super that they compared slick, to African-American. Um, like Teo, he gets compared to an African-American more than to a traditional Latin fighter. Mm. By who? By boxing pundits. Really? I've never heard that. That's my first time, I, first time I ever heard uh, somebody say that. What would you consider Tio's uh, style then? He was doing uh, the Ali Shuffle. You Puerto Rican style? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm actually capping a little bit right there. To me, I was going to say, to me, it's all, it all goes down to coaching. Um, you know, it's just, you know, the uh, different coaches from different parts of the world teach their 
teach their form of of, of um, <clears throat> uh, uh, teach their own style to their fighters. You know, American uh, um, here in the United States, they, they have coaches, especially like in, in different parts of the like here in L.A., they teach a different style than they teach in New York, if you get what I'm saying. You know, and then also a good coach also has to recognize uh, almost going to what HLD was saying. They have to recognize what you do well and what you can't do. And then and then build your style around that. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Go ahead, Clips, and I'm going to go to Hap. I think Hap wanted to go coach. Go uh, no, I was just getting ready to say that uh, in my experience, Mexican style just basically was more of a mindset than actual a real style because as the, um, I believe Frank or um, whoever was alluding to, and a lot of those gyms in the Southwest where that was predominantly uh, coached and, uh, um, you know, said going to by Mexican uh, people and from the neighborhood, they did things like that where now nah, you ain't allowed to clinch. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You know, there's very little clinching, if any, bell to bell, keep them hands going. Like, you know, as somebody would train there to be them exercises where, yeah, you're just swinging for seven minutes straight. You know what I'm saying? They want you to just, you know what I'm saying, keep them hands moving and ain't and there's not too much ducking, but there is skill. There's still footwork, there's still head movement involved, but that real able to that able to fight in the phone booth. Yeah. To stand right there in chest to chest with this person. And no, I'm not moving. I'm gonna make you move or make you back up because I'm not giving ground. That's more of a mindset. So to associate that mindset with a country only attests to that country's commitment to the sport how they really just really embody as a country that mindset of no i'm not giving ground and so you see it in so many of their fighters no it's, it's i think it's I a agree with you. mindset I, I really do i think that determination and and that no quit attitude type of shit going all out and 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 and, and i mean look the guy that fought estrada today that, that that kid was fighting only six rounds fights before this shit mm. and he came out of nowhere this was supposed to be a tune-up fight <laughs> it was no damn tune-up fight you know what I mean? He made. Wait a minute! Made, somebody, some, some, somebody got beat by their motherfucking soft touch. Nah, he didn't get beat. He won. He didn't get beat, but but it, he won, but, won. it was. It wasn't it was a, a soft touch. It was not a soft touch. Oh, huh? it was not a soft touch. <laughs> it was not a soft touch. It was a last minute replacement, so he didn't train for that guy, right? It was a, no. He he was yeah. It was like two weeks ago. I think they they put him on. He also got to know how Gallo fights. Wait a minute, uh, Gallo, Mark, you tell you telling me this man clocked out from his shift and almost went and whooped to somebody's ass on TV? Yo, but I mean, like, it, but even like, like the the like, which I think is going to be probably one of the Kennedy fighters of the year. These two guys, uh, 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 sub seventh, seventh, I think isn't, uh, and and Flores. I mean, these guys are, you know, yeah, they clocked out. One 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 guy works at a, you know, has like a little, he sells like a little bo in a bodega with his wife selling a little bit of everything. Mm. And, and the other guy grew up like by chicken coop and shit they were talking about like they these guys were like poor of the poor you know what i mean trying to and and, and they went all out so i mean it, it's I, I think it's just the mindset and stuff uh uh the, the style that we saw it's it's, it's it's perseverance yeah the, i said teaching and temperament it's also the the person's temperament i mean some kids they love to fight and some kids one of the hardest things to teach a kid is to fight back you know your first instinct is to run out the ring yeah, it's like the 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 old age carpenter, the new age. The, in the old days, you know, you're 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 you know, you're hammering shit, and you hit your you hit your thumb with the hammer, and you say, "Damn it, fuck!" But then you keep on working. Now the new age carpenters, you know, they hit their hand, and they're they're three months off on workers comp. Now I will say <laughs> this. Gotta... I will say this to the whole mindset thing. Now you talk about Mexican fighters and blah blah blah, but we've seen all that dog in that mindset get beat the fuck out of several Mexican fighters because yeah, it is a mindset. It's not a style of fighting because when fighting different Floyds or, or when uh, Duran fought Sugar Ray the second time, yeah, when you keep getting your ass popped and getting jabbed by a skilled fighter every time you try to step forward, you will say no mas. You will slow down like Marquez did against Floyd. You all that, all that, it's a mindset. It's not a cultural thing. And there's a way to beat that mindset. It's called beating his ass. These are their true warriors. You fight in the spirit of a true warrior, and the way to beat them is to dominate them. So I think that's what they mean by Mexican style. You got to beat this man. Let me go to Hat real quick. Hat was trying to get in. He had a question. Yeah, I, I didn't so much have a question as much as uh, wanted to uh, make a comment. Uh, salute to you, Mark, and everyone on the panel. Um, what up? Um, for me, Mexican style is 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 a fake fallacy i agree with puro 
who was saying that uh, it's a marketing ploy. Um, if you look at Mexican fighters throughout the years, the only common link is what uh, that guy Eclipse was saying is that they're that like they have a tough mentality. They don't give up. That I could see is Mexican style. But this idea of like this Mexican style flat footed walking into punches shit is bullshit. Okay. Um, there's been plenty of Mexican fighters who know how to box, who Come box on, well. Marquez, look at Marquez. Look, yeah. Marquez, Salvador Sanchez. You got plenty of examples of guys who could box off the back foot, who know how to do it all. And Nacho Beristain definitely does not take the take three to, t- to land one mentality. That you got guys like, uh, uh, De La Hoya, right? When he fought Trinidad, now you tell me in that fight who was fighting Mexican style. I'll wait because De La Hoya was the Mexican and Trinidad was the guy lunging in and trying to take punches. Very so, great you know, example. So, so you got you got. Guys from Puerto Rico, typically more slick, more known as slicker, you know, type guys fighting the Mexicans. But, you know, and and also the clinching thing that uh, I forget who it was that brought that up, um, that they don't clinch. For instance, uh, Cotto never clinched, almost never clinched, but he was Puerto Rican. And then he learned how to clinch later and that helped him. So sometimes, you know, knowing shit is important. And also, I want to say, what's the difference between Mexican style and Philly style? Because the people talk about Frazier, Philly style. He comes forward, he'll take punches, he'll, he's trying to get inside, like all that. It's just, you know, a different style of fighting. There's inside fighters, there's mid-range fighters, and there's outside fighters, and there's, then there's guys who can do multiple different things. So... You know, breaking it down based on a race or nationality to me is bullshit. There were slick fighters before uh, white guys like Benny Leonard who were slick as fuck. You know, before Sugar Ray Robinson, dancing, jabbing, moving around the ring. Like, you know, so, you know, breaking it down by race to me is a bunch of bullshit. And and that's all I got to (laughs) say. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's factual right there. Because I mean, what what was what was Haglund Hearns? <laughs> was that slick? <laughs> you know what I mean? Not at all. That right. was war. But that was guy, war. But, but certain, sometimes, okay. When I think of the difference between a Mexican style and a Philly style, I don't think of Frazier when I think of the Philly style. I think of Philly style is more defensive, in my opinion. And Mexican style. When I think of a Mexican style, I think of a oh, more right. often. People style. say when people say Philly well, style, I, they, they to... mean they mean like they, a guy who's willing to get in there and mix it up. When people say Philly style, that's what they mean. Well, I, I'm well. You ask me. I don't know. I can't speak for other people. I'm speaking for me, Martinez. When I when 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 I hear Philly style, when I think of a Philly fighter, I think they're 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 more slick fighters. I think they're very defensively sound. They're usually athletic motherfuckers. You're thinking, you're thinking of Bernard Hopkins, right? I'm, I'm just talking. <laughs> I didn't even get it off. I could name more. I could. Danny is a defensive style guy. I don't think Danny has a high punch output where he's super offensive. I think of Boots. These guys have very uh, J Rock. What J Rock? These guys uh, they, they, they parry punches. They they do things like that. They uh, they of course they do the Philly shell things like that. I just think of a Philly fighter being more defensive. Um, and I think of Mexican styles being more offensive. That's it, though. But go ahead. Uh, I remember, uh, what was it, uh, Aguayo? What was he from? Nicaragua? He wasn't even Mexican. And that was more. Uh, uh, Aguayo, yeah. Aguayo, yeah. That more or less. And, and if you think about that in the late 70s, 80s, that set the tone for that archetype. And I, the, it's not, a, it's more of a Spanish fighter. You know what I'm saying? And then, you, you know, when they see a Spanish, because think about it. Like even when the Eastern European wave started coming in of Eastern European fighters from the Slovakias and the stands, they started coming in, and then because they weren't they weren't showing quit and they weren't showing they weren't showing any give, win, lose, or draw, you started seeing them getting associated with Mexican boxing and getting embraced by 
the Mexican boxing community. Oh, really? Honestly, bro. Uh, to be honest with you, Jake LaMotta it was the epitome of Mexican style. And he was and he's Italian. Italian and a motherfucker. Bro, and that was before there were a lot of Mexicans in boxing, like on that level of stardom. You had Jake LaMotta, you had Bobo Olsen, like a lot of Italian fighters had that style. And also Joe Frazier, bro. I'm telling you, Mark, when people say Philly style, they mean brave, strong, coming in. You know, that they don't mean Bernard Hopkins. That's something that's developed maybe now. It means that. But back in the day, Philly style was just like synonymous with Mexican style. A guy who's going to come in, try to get on the inside and land body shots and knock you out. And, you know, that to me, it's just a fallacy, bro. And I, I'm glad I'm here to break it down. Go ahead, go ahead, pass it around. Oh, let me do this super chat real quick. Uh, uh, Juan said our grandfather uh, taught us um, the the Mexican liver shot, but taught us the sweet pea, Vernon Forrest and Floyd uh, senior style. Hurt and move, hurt and be slick. He said we are six one, so he taught us to use our length. All right, let me give him the give him the uh, the drop for that. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for supporting the show in a major major way. A ten, a ten. A tan, a Leave it on the screen for a bit. Um, go ahead, Puro. You bet. Frank is still here. I got Hepmo here. My boy Clips. I'm back. I'm back. The HLD. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's just me, though. You know what I'm saying? When I I don't know what other people think, but when I think of Philly fighters, I think I think of very athletic guys. They're very defensively sound. I think of defense. I don't think of like a Mexican style, like where they just shoulder to shoulder, chest to chest. You're, walk, you're guy, younger I'm than pressing you. You're, you're, I'm pressing you're a younger you. guy. Yeah, I'm 40. <laughs> I mean, I'm 40 though, bro. I ain't that young, bro. You know what I'm bro. saying? I ain't that young. Now, if you want to talk I mean, about... You don't, you don't think Frazier is the epitome of the Philly style? Like, nah, that, that's what, when I, people I say like Philly style, I feel like they're saying Frazier. Well, how I mean, many... Are more guys from Philly doing Frazier or more guys from Philly doing... Fighting like Meldrick Taylor, Bernard Hopkins. Who that said, was the criticism uh, of Meldrick Taylor right there. That he he had too much of the Philly style. He if he had fought uh, slicker and fought on the back foot and just stayed away, he would have won all his fights. But he had too much of that Philly mentality, which is come in there and trade punches, and that's why people criticize him. I think people criticize uh, for more than that too, but that's just boxing. You, everybody gonna have a naysayer, but that's just me personally. What I think, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll pass it around. Don't let everybody get their bars off. But I agree with Haplo. That was uh, one of his biggest criticisms, especially back in those days where uh, that was actually um, not just Meldrick Taylor, but a uh, criticism of him, a lot of Philly fighters. That um, you know, it's just you know, and then the I think it's it's I think it's a bit of a stereotype because in those days, more than than today, it was all about entertaining. Even though like there there was like a Meldrick Taylor that like um, defensively he was always on point, uh, offensively he was great, but like uh, he he also wanted to entertain. You know, he wanted uh, his fans to get his money's worth. But unfortunately, you know, it could be to your detriment sometimes mm. go, go ahead pass it around go ahead Frank okay we it, all it's um, just as much of a fal fallacy for Philly fighters as it is for Mexican fighters like you said there's Bernard Hopkins there's you know um I'm gonna I'm gonna actually argue that it, it's well uh it, it's a stereotype born out of truth and I, I'm gonna keep stressing that you know, all stereotypes come from what are stereotypes? They're they're an exaggeration of the truth. So it's not that they're false. It's just people take them to their extremes. So when someone says a Mexican style, it's what you said, flat footed slugger. Um, but that's not necessarily the truth. But it is true. When you hear um, a Mexican coming, you know, is going to be fighting. You think a, a guy who's tough as nails and who's going to fight. Um, Orlando Salido comes to mind. Um, you know, these type of guys that they may have 10 losses, but on any given night, they're going to beat your ass if you're not on your A game. Go watch Salido, Juan Maya Lopez. Um, I wa was Soto Crass Mexican? I want to say he was a Mexican. 
You guys remember Soto? He was Cross? Mexican. He was Mexican, and he beat Andre Berto. So th that I, that's what when people say the Mexican is a guy who's gonna go out and shield. So I think it's it's a stereotype, but it's born out of truth. Now, it, when people say that, it's an exaggeration, but there's a lot of truth in it. And I think a lot, a lot of that might also just be a cultural thing, like I keep saying about mindset, because, you know, not the stereotype or whatever, but you do have, you know, Spanish machismo involved in that. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're Mexican, whether you're Cuban, Puerto Rican or whatever, there is that pride factor. And listening to all the Spanish brothers talk about how they grew up or whatever, it's more of a pride. It's a mindset that's ingrained in them culturally to where it's not necessarily a style of fighting. It's a spirit of fighting. Yeah. Uh, when, remember when Julio Cesar he quit, they just pelted him. Uh, Mexicans yeah, exactly. don't, don't take that shit. Gonna... He meant the cardinal rule. That is the cardinal rule. But a Mexican crowd is going to uh, Say it again, Puro. <laughs> I said he broke the cardinal rule, but eventually exactly. they, gave, they, they, um, they, they forgave him because, you know, he was at the end of his career, all coked out and shit, too, at that time. You know, but still, they gave him they gave him hell because that's like the cardinal rule of, uh, of a Mexican boxer, never quit. Right. Like I was saying earlier, the whole thing is about, like, growing up and being in them gyms. It was like, yeah, you there can you beat him, but you're going to have to beat that man. You're not going to, like, that, that, that. In my mind, that is what Mexican fighter means. You know, you're going to have to beat him. There's no, oh, I'm going to point him out and look pretty. And that's what made Floyd and when uh, the early parts of Adrian Broner's career look so slick that they're pointing out and just styling on all these Mexican fighters. Because usually with a Mexican fighter, no, you're going to have to beat his ass because you start trying to style on him. He's going to keep coming forward and get you cornered and just start tickling your ribs and breaking all that shit down. Like they said, then in their culture, they have a mindset that the Philly style, that Philly style boxing, all like that, it's real easy to break. Get them on their back foot. And I also wanted to point out, which I always thought was um, uh, pretty interesting, is that um, American fighters, uh, fighters in general, respect Mexican fighters a whole lot. To me, the two of the best uh, uh, American fighters that I've seen is Floyd Mayweather and and uh, Roy Jones Jr. And both of them uh, grew up looking up to a, a Mexican fighter. You know, and they start and they and they adapted. Uh, they added the 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 style of their favorite Mexican fire in in their uh, in their own styles. Yeah, and another one is uh, Shane Mosley because you know he grew up in L.A. and the stories with that Shane Mosley learned a Mex. Well, he called it power boxing, but he used to go to all the Mexican gyms and, and get that work, and that's how he became so famous in L.A. You know, Pete, the Mexicans adopted him, wanted to see him. Pomona, California. And that's just a thing, like, you know, when you run, like, even, like, street level, running them fades, you know, you do that, okay, you run a fade with, you know, a cat from the barrio, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, you've got to beat him. You've got, it ain't, ain't going to be, like, fight to where you start getting your shit off and he's breathing heavy, talking about, nah, I quit. Because, like Puro said, culturally, the mindset is, nah, you got to go out on your shield. Like, they respect there you more for the cats who really, their name became smut back in the barrio because, yeah, they turned her. Mario Barrios, he was I, he was more of a boxer than me. I he never was a brawler, but you know, in that atmosphere with the was it they fight in Texas, didn't they? Because he's from there. Mario Barrios, Tate Davis. He's from yeah, Texas. I believe, I believe he's a fought in Atlanta. Texas. I was there that fight. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, uh, but you know, uh, Mario Barrios, you know, he was pumping that oh, I'm Mexican, I'm Aztec warrior. <laughs> he sold the shit out of that. And he had to go out on his shield. It's the easiest way to promote yourself in boxing. You know, do something that has to do with Mexican. And then another thing about that culture and that's so beautiful is when they do that, when they do that, when a Mexican fighter goes out there and fights like a true Aztec warrior, win, lose, or draw, unlike with black fighters and fighters from other cultures, they could take that L and their careers will take off with an impressive L. Yeah, look at, I agree. Look, at, look at Pitbull Cruz. You know what I mean? He's 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 after a loss. He's now like he's like super elevated now everywhere. Because well, well, some people thought he won that fight. I that's, why. that's why because that's why that that matters too, right? It ain't just going there and getting your ass kicked. He, he, some people that is true. Won that fight. Um, but I, I had a question about what Piro just said. Piro, you just said something about you said. What's up, brother? You, what did you just say right before Clips came in? You said something about. 
Oh, what you said about the oh. promotion, like the easiest way to promote is you know do like wear a sombrero or something like that, you know, because it's a, it's a it's a rabid boxing fan base, so you know, so the promoters try try to tap into that. So do you think that's like some culture vulture shit? Uh, it de- it depends on the situation. Like if you're not fighting a Mexican fighter, yeah, that, that sounds like it's a cultural appropriation shit. No, no, no. To I be mean, honest, like, no. Even if you're a Mexican mm. guy, like or no, no, no. I'm just saying. Well, go, 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 I'm sorry. Or like even if you're Mexican American and stuff like that, but you didn't represent America in the amateur games. You didn't do that. But now that you're pro, you need to tap into that fan base for for the dollars. Do you think that's like some culture vulture shit? Like you could have represented Mexico in the Olympic, but you chose to represent America. You you know. Um, I think uh, I, I I don't know too. Uh, I wouldn't I couldn't tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt. Like if it, if it bothers some people, I'm sure it does. You know, I've heard people. You know, it's like I hate when he comes out with this. I hate when he comes out with that. But I, I think the Mexican people, like in general, you know, like I would say, as long as you don't do anything to like like totally disrespect the culture, I mean, they usually let it slide. Especially if you fight exciting. Well, not Oscar though. I thought that was one of the issues with Oscar. That like they was mad that he. No, nah, the, the, the only reason, like, I was mad at him in particular is because he beat Chavez, you know. Um, also, um, like, the Mexican, uh, the Mexicans adopted him for the Mexico versus the Puerto Rico rivalry. And then when he started running around at the end of the fight, that kind of, like, lost him of some fa- uh, a bit, quite a bit of fans, you know. Um, you know, I think every situation is different, to be honest. I think that's just because we're all individual people, you know, even though some are from Mexico, some from from wherever. We're, you know, every, it, everything bothers somebody a different way, you know, or maybe not at all. So but is it, but it, but it's, but it, but it doesn't mean it's a marketing ploy. It's just, I mean, if, if that's what you carry, and that's what you are. Look, at Strata tonight had like a, a, I don't know, some deer dance or something going on. <laughs> I thought that was fucking cool though, each other. I thought that was real cool. You know what I mean? And and that's not, you know, that's that's just that's just, you know, that's 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 the way he, he runs. You know, he, he represents. You know what I mean? It's not about a marketing ploy or anything like that. Yeah, I think he's a. I think he's, uh, identifies as a Yaki Indian, as Shada does. So that's why they, they were doing that, like before the fight. I thought I actually thought it was pretty cool. I've never seen something like that before. Hmm. Actually, I'm lying. I, I think um, Little Red Lopez used to come out with like the big old headdress and stuff like that. So you know, it's happened every now and then. I'm actually a big fan of when fighters, not just from uh, Native American or Latin American cultures, even African cultures or uh, Caribbean cultures, um, come out like true warriors in the old school fashion like how they would in a real test of combat. Like, yeah, you would come out probably in your ceremonial dress with my, people beating the drums, chanting you on, your tribesmen chanting you on. I like that shit because that brings back the true spirit of this great sport and why this great sport is so ingrained in so many cultures. I agree with you. Eclipse, I always, I always thought they just, uh, it showed kind of like they're fighting for more than themselves when they do some, something like that. <laughs> exactly what I said. Hence, hence the Puerto Ricans, man. We... We come out where we damn flag there is of us, bro, and anything that you know we oh, got. Yeah, Puerto Ricans is blue, is red, white, and blue. Everything It's red, everything, white, and blue. Everything, you know what I mean? He's been everything. coordinated, mouthpiece, everything. He might even have his hair dyed red, white, and blue. You Dude, just I, go, I, no. Fucking underwears are too, man. I promise you that. You gonna know he's a but equal when he walk in this bitch. Goddamn, he ain't saying <laughs> shit. You ain't even gotta hear the pachata music. As soon as you see him, you gonna be like, oh, that's Poppy. <laughs> yeah, the Puerto Ricans, man, they're just like Mexicans. They're very, very proud of uh, where they come from. All right, so uh, my boy Dory Drone said uh, Estrada is done in his book. He said he took a lot of unnecessary damage, even though he wanted to fight. What y'all think? Uh, methods capping as usual. That so what? Now I'm saying methods uh, capping as usual. What you mean? Why you say he capping? Because uh, I don't know. He'd be capping, you know, a lot of the times. So I've told him before. We've had some good debates, me and him. That's method? Yeah, that's method. I did not know that was method this whole time, yo. That is crazy. I don't okay. And you said he's done in his book. And you said he's capping. Um, Frank, um, based on what you thought, do you think he took too much punishment? Is he uh done in your book? No, to me, I mean, when someone's done, like officially done, I, I think their punch resistance is just gone. Um, who's the last person we've seen that uh who I've just seen somebody recently and you can tell their punch resistance was, was gone, but um, it depends who you're facing too. If he's going to face Chocolate Tito again, I mean, they're both kind of at the, their end of the careers anyway. It's not like he's facing some young uh, puncher that's going to just blow him out of there. Amir Khan, punch resistance gone. There you go. <laughs> Did he ever have any? Yeah, I mean, he took some McDonald's shots from hell. Shit. <laughs> that is true. That is true. The Maidana fight was impressive. That was like his, his like his uh, career yeah. performance. 
what Maidana hit, Khan with is what Ortiz got hit with, and he was like, "No mas." <laughs> Whenever he walked up there, like, "Nope." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely quit. All right. Um, same question on uh, HLD. You, you think he took too much punishment? I don't. I, I think it's nothing more than usual than what he does when he's in a twelve round war. So, I mean, the only thing that was it was just unexpected versus just. This kid. That's 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 the only thing that uh, that kind of shocked everybody. It was supposed to be a, a more soft touch fight, and, and ended up being a twelve round one. I'm sorry. Uh, the name. Let me just. The name. Gabe Flores. Remember that fight a couple of months ago, a month or two ago. That kid, Gabe Flores, and he was a young guy, and he's done. You've seen his punch resistance. Yeah, I agree with you on the Gabe Flores. Yeah, unfortunately, he got hit with them clean shots. He got his ass kicked though. He got knocked down five times. It was just he just kept getting clipped. By a non puncher, but yeah, that, 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 like nine KOs or something like that. But even before that, he was getting wobbled. There was a fight before that where he just yeah, kept getting wobbled. Yeah, he came back, knock out like, yeah, he's Jose Vargas or something right now. Jose, Jose, I hope not. I hope not. Shit. It's a, it might be a rep. It might be a rep. It might be, it might be. You're right. I, I didn't see be, that. He in might the be stuck by that, that, that I can say. Hmm? Top ring might end up cutting him. So, so based on what y'all saw, Chocolatito is gonna beat him. Sounds like. It oh sounds yeah, like I, 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 I got, I got, I would have my entire bag on on Chocolatito. Do y'all want to take Estrada in that fight? Do y'all want you? Wow, you'll take Estrada. So, do y'all want to see a trilogy based off what y'all saw tonight? You have to. I, I would like to because I mean, Chocolatito is at the end of his, you know, of of, of, of his of his reign of, of fighting. So, I mean, you know, yeah, I'd like to see him. Uh, perform, you know, still at, at the level that he did last time, uh, as many times as possible before it's all said and done. I mean, we better see it. Like literally, they stripped him of both of his titles because of that fucking trilogy. So we better see that shit. Yeah, I, I mean, they they were. I, I think they're. I think they're talking about uh, December. So who knows? I don't think he's ready to fight back in December, bro. He need to recover. Who? who? Like, now nah, he's ready. <laughs> Man, he took some licks, man. I, I'm a, he, yeah, all boxers take licks, Mark. No, not and not and turn around and fight a a, a damn hall, walking hall of famer. What three months? Girls like fuck it, throw him in there. Three months later, a walking hall of famer. They're both hall of famers. You'll be all right. <laughs> three months later, though, bro, taking that kind of punishment, I don't think that's fair because Chocolatito <laughs> had had time to recover, bro. I just think that I, man, what's this September? So he will be back in the training camp in October. You, you see, you see, you see that mentality that that that, that we no nah, man, you know, nah, nah, we know what's going on. Nah, that ain't no mentality. Just let him know. That's, 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 that's my cheese, man. That's just his opinion, I, Mark. I don't think he took that much damage, to be honest. Really? I think he got a bloody nose, but like uh, it's just that, that's what I wanted to explain earlier. It's just Estrada is form of defense. Like he's been in, in many. Uh, I'm sorry. Turn your mic down just a little bit. Oh, my bad, my bad. Let me just go away from it like, like I did before. How's this? I'm doing that. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. You know, it's just like, it's a, uh, excuse me, Estrada's uh, style of defense. Like, he's never had, like, the greatest head movement, but he has a very a very good active guard. So he, so he, uh, he, um, he yeah, parries a lot of shots, you know, but but um, but the thing is, is when you rely on your active guard too much and then you don't concentrate on on like perfecting your head movement, you're going to get hit, you know, and then and then also this guy, like uh, Chili was saying, it, it, it wasn't supposed to be a soft touch because I've seen the guy fight before, you know, uh, he's a good fighter. He just like I think he was just extra motivated for this fight because it was a shot for to him to become, you know, the, the lineal champion in that division. So I just think, you know, he just, you know, stepped it up a notch, but I don't I don't really don't think he got too much punishment, to be honest. Okay. He but, did get he did get touched up. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know how, how do we differentiate what it what it is. He, he did get touched up. He did get touched I up, mean, and, he, and he did and he did get hurt a couple of times. There were a couple of times. Did. I didn't. I never saw him hurt not once. Oh, he got he got he got hurt a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say he didn't get hurt at all. Okay. What? I mean, that's what I would say. You're saying that he did. So like, who's right? I mean, you know what I'm saying? The visuals don't lie. <laughs> Yeah, I know that. You saw the same fight I did, but you say that he got hurt. I say that he didn't. Right. You said Canelo beat Bivol. I mean, uh, beat Bivol too, though. Bro. No, no, I didn't. Canelo said that. <laughs> Canelo yeah, I said that. Yeah, I, I, I had Bivol eight to four, man. Man, you was up here capping last night talking about he won. Nah, man, I was speaking the truth. Well, I was capping a, cu- a little bit, you know, because, you know, <laughs> somebody has to be the voice of reason. Somebody's got to be the voice of reason on the panel, Mark. 
Somebody's got to be right. the voice of reason I'm on the panel, there. bro. You know? You're the voice of trolling, man. Nah, I mean, I troll a little bit because to, the, to, the, to the, the dudes that really don't know what they're looking at. But I mean, like, um, I mean, it is what it is. He lost. He didn't get his ass kicked. I'll tell you that. He got his ass kicked. <laughs> I mean, if we go by like where I come from, where like if you lose, it doesn't matter if you like lost by like you barely lost or if you lost by a grip. You like I always say I get my ass kicked in the fights I lost, but doesn't mean I always got my ass kicked. At most, Estrada won that fight by two rounds. The way I saw it. Hey, I got a question for y'all. Look, that's the other thing I had on the docket. How did y'all feel about that open scoring? Do y'all think uh, we should uh, do, implement that more? Or do you guys are you guys not a fan of open scoring? I'll, I'll still, go. First. I'll go first. Um, for, for me, sometimes when you give open scoring, it takes away some of the anticipation at the end of the fight that the fans like. I like the anticipation and and that you call out the scores, you call one score for one guy, one and the winner. 114, 114. It's a draw. Oh, you were like, oh shit, man. And then, and you, you know what I'm saying? It's a good conversation. I love the uh, the buildup and anticipation. Also, I think once you start telling those scores, you make a guy fight a different fight because he's like, oh, shit, they they got me losing. Or you make a guy say, man, shit, they robbing me anyway. He just start going through the motion and stop taking chances. Does that make sense? You, oh. it, you it just totally laid it out perfectly, sense. Mark. You laid it out perfectly. I was going to say exactly what you just said. Yeah, it 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 it, it, it does do that. It, 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 unfortunately, you're, we're looking for a way for it to be like fair, right? And there's no no corruption going on and whatever, whatever. But but the, it does change the dynamic, I guess. You know, so it it, it it's like right. a double edged sword. Like what you're trying what they're trying to do with that is make it as uh, 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 non conspiracy type shit. Uh, of robberies, uh, but but does it, you know, change the dynamic or or does it really, you know, does it even matter? No, or does, does it even matter? matter. matter. If they want to rob you, they can just say, "Well, I just saw like this anyway." Fuck it, you know what I mean? So I mean, but here's the thing, though. I don't recall them doing it with all the fights. Then I just thought they did it with the main event. Did you, did I miss that? You know, you might be right with that. Uh, uh, yeah, right. So if you're doing it for the main event. Why not do it for the co-main and all the other fights? They didn't. They didn't. Um, they wasn't calling the scores out for the uh, the other fights. But they, I had my um, my TV on mute. But the, the only reason I found out that they had open scoring because uh, the YouTube channel that I was listening through the to the fight while I was watching it said said it. So I don't know about the other fights. Mm. Interesting. Um, oh, okay. I honestly, I honestly think that uh, the slippery slope and the reason why it's not just universally implemented is um, like how you laid out Mark, because we can see moments where the open scoring and in the spirit of full disclosure and openness can taint the process. Um, you can see uh, the crowd react and the crowd mate can influence the judges even more than, um, than a snapping punch that doesn't really connect, but the dude reacts to it. Um, you know, the crowd reacting when they announced, um, Oh, he scored about, whatever uh, or a fighter just saying oh damn they really got me down four rounds fuck but i do think that it might be necessary to to just rebuild the confidence in boxing like i think within about a year or two we'd get used to it and the kinks can get worked out but i think open scoring is something that probably will redeem sort of the integrity of boxing because there's been too many fights where how many fights have we said which judge scored this shit one one uh, something to a 111 like who the hell did that mm. i i think the but the better fix for it all is that i think that ringside scoring is bullshit. you cannot see everything you're not at the right angle to watch everything they should have these judges in a booth watching it all on camera like everybody else where we could see every fucking detail specifically without missing anything and judging it better off that way. Because, I mean, and when you're ringside at the angle that you're at, you know, the ref could be in your fucking way, uh, the cameraman, you know, uh, then, yeah, the crowd and whatnot. So I, I think they need to get rid of the, the, the ringside scoring and having these guys... Uh, you know, in a room where they can feature audio, HOD. Feature audio. That's a feature audio. You start sounding like you was too close to it or was whomping. Say, say that last part again, bro. I'm just saying that 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 if they were to have them 
in a in a in a closed room, uh, uh, watching it on video, uh, it, it it would help definitely watching the fight like we do, and 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 be more specific into the scoring than than maybe guessing because I think a lot of times is they're not you know there's angles they get, they just can't see they don't know what that was going on if your back's turned on to them and shit, so uh, watching it like we do on TV would be a lot better for the scoring. Um, I'm gonna say, oh, go ahead. But that's that's it. Two things. One, once you watch it in the backstage, you make it easier for somebody to slide you the brown paper bag. Um, joking, but I'm serious. Um, Puro has an app. It's called uh, I said, well, he didn't create the app, but <laughs> I know he probably wish he did. Um, but it's called fightscores.com, right? Fightscores.com. Correct. Fight dash scores, right? I what I like about yes, that, that that app um is you don't just pick a winner for the round. No, you got to think about how much a percentage you think the guy won the round. But more importantly, you have a a, a criteria, a defense, effective aggression. What what's some of the other ones? Um, give me give me a uh, clean, effective punching, uh, more activity. Um, off the top of my head, that's all I can think of. There's four criteria to boxing. Well, no, I'm, I'm, all the reason I'm saying that. But let me say this last part on HOD. Um, I'm gonna pull it up on the screen. I said that though because I think that's dope. Where you can't just like these are professional judges. I think they should be allowed to. Uh, let me close, close that. Keep on back. Uh, I think they should be a uh, should have to tell us why they gave such and such the round. You get what I mean? Like, tell us why. Don't just yeah. say. Don't have us waiting and wondering or uh, us as fans debating for you. But oh, well, we're still gonna do that. Still gonna debate and argue. But I want to see what. What you saw, like, tell me what you saw. Okay, like, like, add that. some context to it. But, but, yeah. but, just as you're saying that, what comes easily comes in my mind right away is that you don't want a judge to tell you those things because then when these promoters hire judges, he's going to pick the judge who's saying what his fighter does, even What's though they do it already because, uh, you know, they, they'll pick judges who they think will be more uh, persuaded by their fighter style, but. If they came out and said what they actually look for, it would give you an insight, more of an insight up to what they're, what who you want to judge the fight. But we do that anyway. Like I, it's to the point now, I can see, hear the judges. Like perfect example was the Brandon Figueroa versus um, Cool Boy Steph. When I watched that fight and I heard those judges' names, I knew they hit the fight for Steph because I know their track record of the fight. I just know right. those things when I, I said, Yeah, that's why I said that. Well, we, yeah, just, just recently, and and also the promoters don't hire the judges. Just, just recently hey, in the uh, Anthony Joshua and, uh, judges, right? and Usyk, all three judges were from, uh, and, and, and the rep were from the, uh, from, you know, AJ versus Ruiz too. So, you know, they, they, they you know, they're gonna, if they know somebody's gonna be more fairy to their fighter, they already know who to go to. Okay, so this is what they have. So they have, knockdowns dominated most of the round control the action effective counter punching more active a uh, significant um punch or a combo even rounds uh opponent dock points good defense landed cleaner or more effective shots uh on the front foot had the opponent in trouble so th this i love that i would love to have these notes like where they they, they just got to click one of these boxes because I, I just feel like it'll give us more insight into judges. But good point, though, Frank. Um, but Puro said the promoter doesn't hire the uh, doesn't hire the judges. Well, who Correct. Pays them, who pays them? He uh, the the, the um, sanctioning body, right? Who's paid by the promoter? Okay. <laughs> exactly. No, the, the 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 promoter doesn't pay the sanctioning body. The fighter does. Okay. But then, I, I kind of go, I know where you're going. I seven. actually think the sanctioning body are like promoters. So, I mean, I get you. Well, the promoter gets gets paid by the by the fighter, and so yeah, it's it's still from the same pot. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, you right, don't want to come from here. I, I never forget. I never forget when Charlo lost to Harrison. He was like, he was like, um. Man, you know what it is. They just mad because it's the Charlo show. It's uh, blah blah blah. He was like, but he said we got these interference judges. Next time we're gonna get the right, the good judges in here. I was like, bro, you don't post to say that. <laughs> he said, Next time we're gonna get some better judges. <laughs> he said, yeah. he was drinking too much. That? You know, Charlo said that after he lost the Harrison. Um, look that up. They was like, man, uh, 
He said, next time we're going to get some better judges. I'm going to try to pull the audio up. Go ahead. Well, we already know the judges. Who's the, like, uh, Mel- Melvina Langton, Adelaide Berg, Feldman. Um, shoot, who's these other famous judges that are always going? There's a lot of them, to be honest. Uh, I remember, well, I always used to just go by Harold Letterman. That was it. Which I thought, who, uh, which I thought was a horrible judge, to be honest. I, 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 I hardly ever agreed with uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard. His daughter became a um, score person. Uh, Julie, yeah, Julie, Julie, yeah. But Kellerman's cards were always pretty good. Kellerman's cards were pretty accurate when he used to still do them. Yeah, but his daughter, she, she's out of her fucking mind. You said I always yeah. agree with Andre Ward, even though I agree with his opinion sometimes. Andre Ward could score a fight. Hell no. I be disagreeing with Andre Ward all the time. Yeah, I was about to say I, I, I disagree with that. Ward. I always agree with him for some reason. I don't know why. One part, and I pass the mic right back. Um, well, two things. Reggie said open scoring keeps fighters, their team, and the fans aware of where the fight is. Nah, I don't. I don't want to see that though. I, I like. I like the. So open what does the panel vote? I have, I vote for close scoring. I don't want to open scoring. Me neither. Um, but look, Andre Ward, I look at Andre Ward's score, and y'all know I love Andre Ward as a fighter. I respect him as a uh, man outside the ring. If Andre Ward scored Andre Ward's fights, he, he would not be undefeated. Like, if his fights Ooh. was scored the way he scored those fights, he had about five losses, man. Fuck me, man. I know, Mark, but I mean, but that's because he wouldn't want to lose. But I mean, like, he's trying to be as objective. I think he's well, being as objective as possible. Lost that Kovalev fight by his own, but that first Kovalev, he would have lost that fight by his shit. And he knows he lost it, but you know, he ain't going to say that. You know, he still got to make his money. You think he lost that first fight? I do. I do. It was close. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it was a robbery by any stretch of the imagination, but I just personally thought he lost. All three judges had it, 115, 113, all three ways. Like, it was a unanimous decision. That was crazy, right? That's a, that's a close fight. It was close. I don't think it was no robbery. <laughs> One, no, it it could have been a draw. Could have been a swing round here and there, and that's it. Yep, it could have been a draw as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad at it, uh, though, who, that they gave it to Andre. I just thought Kovalev so won. No, I don't, ag- I don't agree with Andre's cards, like, like you, but but at the same time, maybe he sees he sees things that we don't fucking see. And and it's different for him than the way we see it. You know what I mean? He's human, like, we could see the same things he sees. Yeah, yeah. I think Clips was trying to jump in. Clips, you bet. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, getting ready to agree with you, um, Andre Ward. Although oh, I do, oh, on, brother, you agreeing with me? Hey, that's what I like. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Stop it, funny guy. Uh, but now, nah, I, I, a lot of Andre Ward's cards have me scratching my head because with the respect I have for him as a fighter and everything, and I respect him as a commentator, sometimes when I listen to his during, like in real time and he's breaking down the round, I'm like, ah, I didn't see that, buddy. Then again, he's doing it from the basement of his home, so when they're not watching, who knows what the hell's going on. He's getting a blow job. He ain't watching the fight and shit. And, oh, yeah, let me just give it to this guy. <laughs> But that's the thing yeah. about scoring. It's so hard. Like, you know, like everybody, like they have a set of rules on how you're supposed to score a fight. And then obviously they don't always agree. That's why you get majority decisions, split decisions. You get some wide cards. You're like, what the hell? You know, so uh, like I would say the average fan probably doesn't even know how to score a fight properly. Yeah, I can agree to that. I, I can, can agree with that a thousand percent because I think we haven't even, I don't think we ever canonized truly what boxing brawling or whatever and how they correlate within this sweet science and this sport of prize fighting because the sport is prize fighting yes sir to where to where when mayweather and people like that say that that's not somebody being a dick or being a capitalist that is the 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 sport is prize fighting now prize fighting consists of brawlers boxers and skilled fighters so how do you really have a one uniformed way of judging so many things that you might see within a ring? You feel what I'm saying, Mark? Oh, I'm listening. Because you know that 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 becomes because if well, if you judge it on boxer criteria, well then the Floyd Mayweather, Sugar Ray models, yeah, that's what you want, and anything that's not that doesn't meet the standard. 
if you go by a brawler then it's mexican style all day and if you're not fighting mexican style then you're a pussy you're a punk and you, you know what i'm saying and you're just a flash in the pants and just wait till somebody hits you like people say about a lot of people hell i've said it about certain fighters um, i i think it should be stored on priority of what these things are whatever the card but i think if, uh, uh, effective uh, 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 uh punching or, 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 or it, it should take precedence over everything because that is what this is about it's about me beating your ass what about significant punch or combo well, that's the thing, Mark. Uh, there is a guidelines um, on how t on how you, there are guidelines on how you're supposed to score a fight, and they're taught to these judges, you know. But the thing is, it's like we're all human, you know. And then you also got to factor in the crowd, you know. Sometimes uh, I think, you know, because I've never talked to a judge, you can, um, you know, the, judge, the the crowd can affect the way you're seeing a, a different fight. Also, um, we got to know that, like the 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 judges hand in their scorecard after every round. You know, a lot of the times we get caught up in like. Uh, yeah, um, um, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. I was just making an oh, ad. I, I said now they do. It was a time where they didn't. Back yeah, but that day. was a long time ago. Like uh, the 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 uniform rules that we go by today, that was back in the '60s. They implemented them, and by the WBC, by the way. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, and then and then me like I just because I'm a boxing nut like uh, I, I recently signed up for the WBC's uh, boxing judge course not because I want to become a judge I just kind of wanted to 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 learn how you're supposed to judge it properly and stuff you know it was only hundred bucks and then you get all the rules and stuff so I mean you know it's pretty cool. No, oh, okay, okay. I was thinking about that too. They got that membership going on too. Yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah, cool. They, they teach you like to the T. They have there's like classes and stuff. You have to like sign into a Skype and shit. You know, I didn't do it all the way. You know, but it, it's pretty cool. So how long is the course? Uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, I haven't completed it uh, all the way through, but it's about, I think here, let me pull it up real quick so I can tell you what it is exactly. I, I do know that that WBC is experimenting already with the, uh, with with having the judges in, in a room watching the fight you know, uh, secluded away from the fans on TV. How did they go? I missed they're, that. They're, well, the, the, in, in, a, in an interview I saw with Mauricio that, you know they're, they 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 working on that as as we speak. So I don't know what's the you know what they've determined um, out of it yet. But that's what they're 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 experimenting with. That. Shout out to my guy Punch Drunk boxing in the building. Uh, punch Drunk, Mr. Moonshine himself. Yeah, Punch been grinding too, man. Um, he says uh, the black style is awesome. Listen, listen. Tyson, Hagler, Hearn, Roger Mayweather, Frazier, Henry, Hank, the Hawk. Uh, yeah, boy, I used to love the Hawk uh, Aaron Pride, man. Uh, Roy Jones, he said, boxer punchers, uh, boxer punchers excitement. Okay. Hey, Mark, I pulled it up. You want me to share my screen so you can check it out real quick? You can. Uh, I got one quick question um, for you guys while you're doing that. Go and share your screen. Um, okay. Karma, Karma said, honestly, you see more on TV. Um, for the people who've been to uh, live boxing I'm, and i'm talking about a championship fight like where you know it's lit, lit um do you guys prefer to see boxing in the arena or you prefer to watch at home same question for the chat too do y'all prefer to go to the fights or do y'all prefer to watch it at home do you feel like you see more at home shout out to carmen to rain too it, it all depends on what's the experience that you, but if but if i just want to like watch the fight or whatever or any sport it's really nice but if it's about the experience yeah, there's nothing like like being there, you know, in the crowd and 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 and, and you know that the the that whole adrenaline rush with the crowd that, that you get. It's just it's just you know it depends on what you're looking for. But if you're looking for it to pay attention to, you know, to, to crossing your T's and dotting your eyes with, with, with whatever whatever sport you want to watch, it's definitely gonna be on TV. Frank, same question. Um, man, I mean, it's a tough one, but I gotta say, I, I just prefer being at home. Uh, with family and friends watching a big fight, drinking, eating. Uh, I'm not worried about the scoring and shit. I just want to see a good fight. And you ain't paying thirty dollars for a <laughs> glass of beer, right? Or one cup of beer. No, it's also more like when I'm sitting ringside, I'm watching intently. I don't think I'm having fun, but at home yeah. I'm relaxed. I like the whole atmosphere. HBO, the announcers. It's just <laughs> you got <lit>. rewind. <laughs> so you got what? You got rewind. <laughs> Right, you can't rewind it at the crib too. Small hat. Definitely can do that. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mark, you brought the small hats. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, you can rewind. I don't know. I just hit the button for nothing. I had to go to it, make sure that was it. You know what I'm saying? We we gonna be hitting the buttons today. Yeah, man, talking about talking about that Mexican style. He lied. Y'all need to worship him. <laughs> Uh, he said the tweet sign was definitely defined uh, by journalists uh, like a person like you and I. Yeah, uh, somebody said it earlier. They was like, yo, this shit was created as a media ploy um, as well. Um, Pura, I don't know what's going on. Pura, you keep dropping off. I guess he's trying to uh, share a screen. Make sure I got the link out there. And it's an open panel, open channel, open dialogue. As long as we keep it respectful, we can come back and do it again. Um, the phone number is on the screen if you want to call in and voice your opinion. Tell me what you thought about the fight. 470-705-9507. 470-705-9507. Also, let me know what you guys think of the open scoring. Why did we have open scoring just for the main event, not the other ones? Are you a fan of open scoring? Also, we're talking about the quote-unquote Mexican style of boxing. Um, should more fighters, African Americans, um, even the Europeans, should they implement more of a quote unquote Mexican style to have more exciting fights? Because I don't, I don't recall people talk about Mexicans ever having a, a snooze fest. It's always going down. It's always something. It happened. It happened. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, his first time on HBO, stunk the joint out. I forget I got, the. I got to go back and check the catalog. I didn't know that. I remember that fight. That was a good, uh, good, good callback. Yeah, that that whole it? fight card just stunk. Who was? Yeah, it, it was uh, an African American fighter. He's pretty famous. I mean, he was a contender. I uh, wanted uh, Freddie, uh, not Freddie Norwood. It might have been, but. Um, yeah, so Manuel Marquez had stunk the joint on. He, they were never going to put him back on um, show t um, HBO. So if you remember, H you know, he kind of changed his style to uh, to get back on. He had to put on good, exciting fights. He was a technical boxer. Uh, he was willing to jab and, and box all night. He, he didn't care for exchanging. And that's what this guy... Nacho Bernstein trains this new guy, Ray Vargas, and people criticize him because he has just such a snoozer style. Uh, Tony said, uh, he said panel of the conversation could apply for David Benavides. Um, he said, I'm not sure if you guys notice it. It seems like the kid just shuts his brain off and goes forward and um, just goes forward, not saying he doesn't use it. I'll say this, though, about David. I feel like he knows when he realized those guys can't hurt him. He just tried to just walk him down, pressure and walk through him. He, you know, he's not, yeah, he might get hit with a shot, but he's not getting bloodied and fucked up. He's like, oh, that's all you got? He's a bully in there. He's a weight bully. He's definitely so, Marky Nash, just something like we talk about the style, you know, that's what uh, it with that Pogto Biggie switched the style up. You know, stop rapping for the, stop rapping for the, you know, and start rapping for the uh, bitches. <laughs> start rapping for the bitches, you know? Mm. Okay. Uh let me do this uh right here. Conshan sent the Canadian coins. Let me uh let me uh just round it up. Let me give him two drops. He said um a tan, a tan, a tan, a fing tan. He said the judges are selected, wink wink, um, by the commissions, but essentially have to be approved by the promoters before they get hired hired. Um it has been a uh, common place to say promoters pick judges. All right, let me give him the other drop for the for the foot ten. I got, I got, I got five on it, five on it. Shout out to Conshan. We will leave it up for a bit. Go ahead, go ahead. Anybody want to reply? Well, no, that's just what I said. I, I was under the assumption that the promoters, but essentially they do, but. I mean, that's boxing. They have a suggestion box. Bitch, I need chill, man. <laughs> All right. So, um, did everybody give me their take on the open scoring? Just to make sure. The, um, let, let me know in the chat, too. Are you guys a fan of open scoring? Is it, do you like open scoring? Are you against open scoring? Do you feel like, hey, look, once the fighter hears he's down, he started getting desperate, so instead of fighting his normal fight, he, now he's doing something he normally wouldn't be doing because he's like, oh, shit, they telling me I'm down now. After the, You know, I think they do it every three rounds, right? Or every four rounds, right? So I think it's the fourth and eighth and then the twelfth. Are you guys a fan of open scoring? Did everybody give me their take on it on the panel? I I, I, I think I'm, I'm not 
pretty much on the same side with you that that it can affect the fighter uh, uh, to a point, but it also takes away from the for, from the excitement value as as you know as 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 a consumer. You you know that uh, yeah we're all waiting for like you know and uh, no who the fuck is it? You know what I mean? If we already know, it's, it takes away it, that it takes it all away. So I I I don't think that's that's a good way to go about it. I, I actually think that open score might need to be implemented just to uh, just to clean up the fuckery within the sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and I think that as much as it's kind of weird and there's some elements that might need to be cleaned up about it, that uh, give it about a year or two, it would actually normalize as fans and we'd get used to it. Mm. But I, I agree with HLD. Like, just because it's open scoring don't mean they won't rob you. You know, they, they'll still rob you and just say, hey, well, look, that's how I saw the fight. Say what you want. What you gonna do? Open scoring is a bad idea. I mean, it's still entertainment. You know, what, what did Jim Lampley always used to say? It's the theater of the unexpected. Yeah. You know, it's a theater of the unexpected and, and you'll be robbing people of the suspense, the drama, um, because it is, it is sort of a show, a theater, you know. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm listening. And that's exactly what I said. It takes away the anticipation that builds up at the end where they calling out the scores and they might call all three scores and they say, so you're winner by unanimous decision. You're like, oh, he got it by unanimous decision. Yeah, but sometimes too, I can hear the scores and I'm like, oh yeah, he won this shit. Because there's no way you gave that other guy, you know, nine rounds. But yeah, I, I don't like the open scoring, but that's just... I mean this last fight we seen uh while well, I mentioned Tank Barrios and uh Tank Davis and Mario Barrios, you know, Floyd had went to the corner, or even Bud and Spence. He would, you know, the guys went to the corner, hey man, you're losing. Like you're gonna take that away. Maybe Bud thought he was winning, but when someone told him, dude, you're losing, you gotta close the show. That wasn't open mean, scoring though. That was them telling them what the TV was saying. No, I know, but I'm saying with open scoring, you would take some of that away. Oh yes. But then also, too, both of those guys, though, in those examples you used, went out there and got a knockout. Call from Anthony from Florida. What's up, Tony? Hey, what up? Uh, you guys were talking about the, the Mexican style of fighting. Uh, and this conversation kind of applies to a fighter that I enjoy watching, David Benavides. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this yourself and stuff with David. It seems that it, I'm not saying the kid doesn't use his brain like in the during the, the fight and stuff, but it seems like the majority of the time he just shuts off his brain and goes forward, uh, not respecting like not not using his defense correctly. Is it just me, or do you guys know that with David that he shuts down his brain completely and just goes forward? And uses a lot of, a lot of, a lot of offense instead of being defensive and offensive at the same time. Yeah, uh, with David, um, me personally, uh, I'll go first, and then I pass the mic. Um, I said it before. I don't know if you heard me. Um, I, I just believe David doesn't respect their power, and he does that once he realizes they ain't got nothing for him. No different from me marching towards my daughter. She can be swinging away, and I'm like, <laughs> whatever just pick her right on up like she can't do nothing to me and um that's what i think of when i think of david when he does that i don't see him doing that immediately in round one with these guys but when he gets to the point where he's like oh that's all you got oh you don't got weak already let me go and get you out of here and he gets him out of here um for the most part um, yeah, anybody want to reply oh, thing, oh. i'm not a big fan of it i'm not a big fan of the open scoring i like the traditional way because I think the open scoring can cause more controversy in the fight and stuff like that. I think it, it's going to cause more controversy than it actually helps during the uh, because the, the scorecards are not going to be the same and the the scoring is you don't know what the exact accuracy with open scoring is when instead of the traditional way how they traditionally score it you actually, if you read how they score it, it's actually more, more consistent. 
the open scoring is probably based on feel and what they see instead of actual uh do you, do you guys agree it's more about feel with open scoring instead of the accuracy of the scoring and stuff like that huh open open scoring. i think i know I, that's what comes to my mind too is that if 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 the crowd doesn't like your score you might be uh influenced to change it because they'll start pelting you like my guy's losing. Imagine being in Mexico and you're scoring it for the non-Mexican dude. They're going to pelt you, man, and chase you out of there. So they do that to let them know, like, hey, look, your guy already losing. So don't don't kill us. Look, don't be surprised. <laughs> you already know. You already know he losing. Or what? So, so Mark, well, I, I never got everybody else's answer when they, you answered, but I never about the David Benavides. Right, right, right. I think, the, I think you jumped oh. back in talking about the open scoring, though, but it's all good. Um, Frank, uh, yeah, HOD clips. What do you guys think of his assessment of HO, uh, not HOD, uh, David Benavides, where he said, uh, he shuts down a part of his brain and just start walking towards the guy, taking unnecessary punishment? What do you guys think of that? Yeah, uh, just real quick, uh, supreme belief. David believes in himself, uh, above everything. I've seen it before. And he believes he's going to get the guy out of there. There's no fear. That's my take. <laughs> uh, okay. HOD, uh, you want to answer? I think Clip stepped away. I think David is a little bit of both. He's a weight bully. So, so you know, he's a giant in, in a division. And, uh, you know, so, so, so yeah, he, he, he is, he is not a, a fear getting, getting cleaned out because, I mean, who the hell is he fighting anyway? Um, so I mean, it, it's it's hard to judge. I mean, once we see him versus the top notch competition, then we'll we'll see how what what is what his strategy is going to be, and 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 then we can judge it. But for right now, I think just like Mark was saying, he's just look, man. I'm a big dude. You're not going to hurt me, and, and 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 I'm here to just take you out. That's that, and he does it. Hey, did anybody know? Uh, speaking of strategy, does anybody know why this fights are on Sunday? Uh, the Ruiz versus Ortiz, other than Labor Day. I I, I heard because uh, college football started to uh, tonight. I heard. Oh. And so because of that, they they did it on Sunday. That's sad. They bumped y'all off. They bumped boxing off their day. Yeah. They ain't even pros. It just shows you the power of college football, man. Shit. Or the weaker or the weakness of our sport and the climate of our sport right now in America. What's that again? Or it could be how weak the sport is in America right now. Like, yeah, it's it's not it's it's not I'm sorry. Not. No it, I mean you go to ESPN, right, and you're looking for boxing or the little emoji. Fuck you gotta look for that fucker because it's it I'll be uh, oh you got horse racing, I think, before boxing. So you know, I mean, it's 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 not it's it's just not a popular sport as it once was. Um. Okay. Uh. So that that's the answer, uh, Lisa. College football. Um. I may have said at home you are ringside. That's why he prefers to be at home and watch the fights. Right. Um. Constant is pro is common for promoters to pay judges expenses like hotel travel. That's often cited. As a way of influencing judges, well, they shouldn't have to pay for their own hotel, right? But I guess when you pay for the room, you can say, oh, "You got perks." Maybe they get extra perks. Yeah, so like, yeah. Let me get that key. Let me leave him um, some flowers in there and put a little bag of money in the flowers. Mm, you never know. You know how that goes. Damn. Um, Do said, "What time does Black Empowerment start?" <laughs> Black Empowerment Talk Star. That's BET, ain't it? Black Empowerment Talk. Um, uh, Orlando, Canales, Benito, Lopez, over there, Century had unique styles of boxing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He said, "You, I missed your super chat. No, Con, I read yours. You sent another one? I read this one. Or you sent another one? Yeah, I read this one. And I left it on the screen. You talking about this? Yeah, I read that. But I, I'll leave it on the screen for you again. Yep. Um, the judges are selected, wink, wink, by the commissions, but essentially have to be approved by the promoters before they get hired. It's been commonplace um, to say promoters pick the judges. Yep, we definitely read that one. Let me see. Let me see. 
Yeah, but shit. Other than that, man, y'all had anything else y'all want to add? I thought the conversation. I thought we had a good show tonight. Definitely a good show. I probably do a, a, a members only real quick, real quick members only. What you it, it, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a good night of boxing, and and, and for what it was, right? I mean, no, like I said, nobody expected this to be in, uh, and and I think it created a buzz. The the, the these the, you know the undercard created a big buzz, uh, uh, you know, to to make this card really good. So I. I you know, for what it is, I mean, if there is a style of boxing that that brings out the excitement, is kind of like what we saw tonight. It doesn't have to be the you know, rock 'em and sock 'em, but uh, but 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 definitely, you know, offensive minded. Uh, you know, got everybody buzzing. Definitely had everybody buzzing. I had a good time watching these fights. I was in just screaming at the uh, the phone. Cause I was watching. I started on the phone, then I ended on the uh, in the studio. But I was trying to put my baby to sleep, and I'm watching these phone, watching the fights on the phone, and I got the earpiece in, and I'm trying to rock her to sleep. And I'm like, oh, and I'm just startling her, and she, I was like, oh, let me relax, man. But she was sleeping. Anyway. I said, let me put you down. I just didn't want to move. Like I didn't want to miss nothing. Definitely, definitely a good fight. Another thing too, I like about the DAZN app is I can rewind. I don't like that about the Showtime app. I can't rewind this shit. It's so like, if I missed it, I missed it. I got to wait till the next day. I'm like, that ain't what I'm paying for. I'm paying to see it now. And if I missed it, I should be able to watch it again right now on demand. So I definitely like the DAZN app. Same with the, uh, I think the ESPN app, certain fights, like like if it's live and you still got it, you can rewind. But if you click off once the fight is over, you can't go back in it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. The ESPN is kind of, uh, they got to fix it a little bit. Uh, I, the DAZN, I think, by far has, has the better app of everybody. And it's still not perfect, but it's it's definitely better than the rest. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to the girl behind the mic. What up, sis? What's popping with you? Lisa Bell in the building. She said George Ditton um, was the inside fighter from Philly. Absolutely. They call me Marcos Nash now. Marcos. All right. Well, shit, man. I, I think that's about it for me. I'm, shit, I ain't got to I ain't got to talk for nine hours just to be talking for nine hours. Shit. <laughs> Um, y'all got anything you want to add? I'll read and I'll go through and read the rest of the comments before I let y'all go. And then I'll do a members only. No, well, Mark, man. Good, good, good topic, man. Good, good, good another good show, man. So, what's up, Frank? You back? What's up? Yep. Had to charge my phone. Sorry about that. You all good. Uh, give, give me, you got anything else you want to add to the conversation? Go ahead, get your bars off. Oh, yeah. Just as far as this whole Mexican style thing, you know, one of the things, uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I know it'll get criticized as rock and sock and robots, but my belief, uh, having, you know, been in gyms, boxing, working with fighters, that it does take skill, believe it or not. There's a there's a lot of skill in what, uh, like, Virgil Ortiz does, or Jose, Jose Luis Castillo does, or um, Julio Cesar Chavez used to do. You know, there's a, there's a ton of skill in it. You know, it's not technically sound, um, as far as watching us Pernell Whitaker, but there is a lot of skill and it takes a lot of determination and commitment. One thing that hasn't been brought up, but we're talking about Mexican style is body punching. That's what synonymous with Mexican style is a commitment to the body. Yeah, man. But also too, uh, you said, you said what Canelo doesn't do what you heard. No Canelo. No, I, I said that synonymous with Mexican style is commitment to the body. Like as you can see the gif on the screen right here, like Canelo is just he's slick. He, this motherfucker slick too. I don't care what nobody mm -hmm. says. Look how he's just like, oh man, the kid is the kid is talented. I don't care what nobody says. I I take slack sometimes from the certain brothers. They be like, oh, but he, this that and the thing. I'm like, man, that motherfucker can fight, man. I don't care what none of y'all saying. And, yeah, and oh, oh go he ahead, but fifty seven cherries, bro. All all these dudes ain't fifty seven cherries, bro. Come on, bro. You can't. So seven dudes on your block <laughs> and, and one thing about the mexican style if you notice that um it also is because a uh, mexican is not going to be as fleet as foot as athletic as maybe his uh african-american counterpart so take jose luis castillo and uh remember if you remember marcos madonna what did he do before he, he started to train with robert garcia uh for floyd mayweather because how else are you going to counter speed and athleticism I mean, that's in every sport, you know. Timing. 
technique, timing. Um, you, you just have to be able to make make up for those deficits in your um, athletic ability. So I, I hate when people say it's rock and sock and robots because it's not. There's a there's a technique and skill to it, it within its own right. But some motherfuckers do be rock and sock and robots though. Let's be no, clear. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Margarita no, was the You don't need to worship him. Yeah, man. Some people just straight up just. <laughs> That's hey it. Mark, my bad. I keep getting disconnected. My bad. No, you good. You good, bro. You ain't got to apologize. I, I got it pulled up too, just in case uh, you didn't know. Oh, okay, I didn't see it. Okay, so boom. And what is this exactly, again, Puro, for the people who don't know? Uh, so uh, if you want to become a boxing judge under the WBC, uh, you know, um, sanctioning body, you can sign up for a hundred dollar course, and you know, this is level one. So uh, like, I don't want to become a judge. I just want to like, uh, sort of like, uh, I've always. Uh, I don't know. I'm just anal like that. Just when I, because I don't rescore fights normally, but I do try to rescore like the ones that are like, damn, they were so close that I, I, I just was curious to rescore them to see if they, if, if I agree with the judges, but I want to do it properly. So I signed up for this course to, so they, you know, they, uh, they teach you step by step on how to uh, judge a fight. Who do I admit it? You're just a junkie, bro. You're a boxing junkie. Oh, I've always been that, man. I've always been that. But uh, they didn't have this back when I was a kid, you know? So I was like, I thought this was pretty cool. So I'm like, you know, I ain't going to become a judge or anything, get certified. But, you know, it's good to know, you know, the, the proper rules, you know? Okay, so what can you be with, do with a level one, uh, being a boxing judge level one? What, what so it teaches you all the basics. So let me let me just run through it real quick. So um, so this is just how you sign up and stuff. You're not about to do no championship fight with level one, right? No, no. Obviously, uh, uh, once you become certified and, and you know the, you pass all their tests, and you, I'm sure you have to like um, go with one of their judges and show that you're competent. You have to get your experience in. I'm assuming, right? You know, that's how it is with all judges. You start with the low level cards, and then once they start seeing, I guess, progression that you you know what you're doing, they start bumping you up until you get to the top level, which is like you know there's certain judges that always get the top assignments. You know, so they they don't start with amateur. No, I, I actually don't know how they start because, like I said, uh, like um, this is like basically the rules. But actually, after you get certified, they 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 um then then you like they contact you and and they I don't know what level they start you at. Paul from Paul Swift from Brownsville. Paul Swift from Brownsville, talk to me. Hey, yeah, uh, you know. I was I, I spoke to you guys yesterday. Thanks for calling back. I did back. a little I, I did a little bit of research today and um I like to listen to uh, what is it, oh, Juan Marquez and Eric Morales. They have a YouTube show, right? Right. And they do a they do a lot of interviews and they were talking about the Mexican style and why yeah and what the Mexican style is. And what they were saying is Mexican style and they interviewed like, you know, like different fighters, you know, fighters that are in the Hall of Fame and, you know, just fighters that have been around for years. And they all end up saying the same thing. Me the Mexican style is leaving it all in the ring. And, and one thing they were talking about is they were saying as Mexicans, as Mexican fighters, we're always shorter, you know, shorter legs, shorter arms. We're not as athletic as the African American fighter, so that's how come they have to fight that, that way. And he says, and the uh, um, the the other fighters that fight more or less the Mexican style is also the the Orientals because they're the same. They're short legs and short arms. And I, I you know, I thought that was kind of interesting what they were talking about. Mm. I don't know what you all think. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the deceptively fast uh, white wide receiver. He's deceptively fast. <laughs> Wes Welker, yeah. Cooper Cup. <laughs> right, because he's supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't like disagree that? with what they say, though. Say it again. 
I disagree with what they say, like especially on the athleticism part, because like, I mean, like, um, like every the, the style like predicates how you fight, you know, like, uh, you know, if you're taught the style where you're like, you know, moving using all four corners of the ring, you're, you're it, it appears like you're, you're fleeter of foot than 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 say um, uh, a fighter that you know it comes forward, you know, sits down on his shots, you know. So I kind of don't disagree with the, that that this guy is more athletically than this guy. I, I just never agreed with that. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead. Anybody else want to reply to the caller? I think he made good points. Uh, I think I was kind of speaking on that just before he called in. Uh, the Mexican style. Uh, with Ho How was Jose Luis Castillo going to ever be? He couldn't box Floyd Mayweather. You know, Canelo lost because he tried. Why would you try to box the boxer? You're going to have to make it a dirty, ugly fight. Hmm. And Floyd lost, by the way, that first fight. Oh, yes, he did. What? <laughs> oh, what? I'm not like great for leaving that. Yo, but it doesn't make him any less great. It doesn't make him yo, any less great. No bias, man. Look. No, it's not, no, no Mark, it's, there is no bias when it comes to me. That's 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 oh. what why, at least in my perception, what? why I think oh, I can man. call it down the middle. You no. get what I'm saying? Because Floyd is my favorite fighter of my generation. You I'm know? Just, so I know how great he is, but I still so. think he lost. Well, let's see if he's biased. So who won? Sweet Pea or Julio Cesar Piro? Uh, Sweet Pea. Okay. In my, so he's in not my biased. opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> but it wasn't a robbery like most people think. But I thought Sweet Pea won clearly. Yeah, Sweet Pea won that, won that fight. And to tell you a, a story, on um, that Sweet Pea, uh, Sweet Pea and Chavez fight, I went down to Mexico and I seen it. They had a, what is it, that closed circuit thing. And I was probably, there was probably about a good three about 3,000 people watching it at that. And the building that I was watching it at. And when they came with the scorecards, I mean, that place was quiet. And when they called out, you know, the, they, they were out the, the scorecards, you just seen a bunch of people, just a sign of relief. Man, we, we dodged one. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be lying to you guys. Like, I really could think that Travis won. You know, I don't know how that, how you could tell I'm non-biased by that question, but anyway. Well, he won, but he didn't win. I, I don't, I don't think Chavez won. And by then, Ch Chavez, by then he was, he was too much into drugs too. Uh, I, I was seeing an interview that. Pira, who did you think uh, won, Oscar or Floyd? Um, Floyd, but it was close. It was really close because even though Floyd's own daddy thought Oscar won, so I mean, shit, man, that, that was highly debatable, you know. Hey, uh, yeah. and I have a bias for Floyd too, man. Especially since my my Oscar hate was at an all time high around that time. I you know, so yeah. shit. I don't know, man. I think I think Oscar on, on that one lost it, but Oscar was being Oscar. He always burned out at the end of it uh, with fights. He always tired out. All my homies Thanks. to this day, man, you're just a Floyd nut hugger. You're just a Floyd nut hugger. I'm like, nah, that's what I saw. Yeah. Why did Canelo <laughs> ever try to box with Floyd? Does anybody know why? Why would you try to box with a boxer? You, he was. <laughs> oh my God. My chismo Spanish pride. He wanted to try to out Floyd Floyd and see what he got for his troubles. Who told him that was a good enough. idea? Some asshole. Some asshole in his gym. Somebody fluffing his nuts. Making him feel good. You can go out there. I've seen you in training. You're just as fast as him. You can do all the same things you can, he can. Yeah, okay. Nah, I don't think that was the case at all. Y'all think Gary Antoine Russell has a mixed style at 140. Shout out to Logic. No. <laughs> okay. I don't, Any brother. I don't, brother. Anybody else want to uh, take a swing at it? That Good Gary point. Russell has a Mexican style? Gary Antoine Russell, yeah. No. Um, I'm, boy, telling, I'm telling you, Errol. Errol's the only one that I could see. My boy, uh, not you want to say Sean Porter? No. Um, yeah, well, I, I didn't one. think to the body as much as a Mexican fighter would do. You know, kind of like uh, Arrow, but but Arrow learned from a Mexican. You know, so I mean, that's why he fights the way he fights. Okay, uh, DB said melanated brothers don't need to employ any other style. 
it's evident that our style has been effective. Um, yeah, it wasn't about effective though. The key word was uh, exciting though, more exciting, some would say, right? Um, and uh, he said tank over all his competition, Devin. But this is the comment that he said that made my made me made me say, mm. he said, uh, when Mexicans start dominating black fighters, then we could consider alternating, uh, altering our styles. But for now, we run the divisions and the sport with IQ, athleticism, speed, power, and generalship. Not every division, though. And um, like literally all that I stuff, uh, like Canelo, that's what every boxer uses. Yeah, if you're a champion, right? Um, well, shit, not everybody. No, everybody. I mean, like uh, you don't think uh, the Mexicans or the so perceived so called perceived Mexican style doesn't need uh need IQ, athleticism, speed, power, generalship. It's just everybody uses those uh, attributes in different ways. Absolutely. Um, but some I, I meant like some people just just got straight power though. Some dudes are just they weight bullies. They ain't in there doing no. They ain't showing no kind of crazy athleticism. They just showing no generalship. They just walking towards them and just pounding away. Like I can take your best punch, but you can't take my best punch. Type of thing. Um, Mark, I think you're wearing your t-shirt today, respectfully. Yeah, I, I am. What, what shirt? What shirt? Uh, the YouTube Daddy one. What you mean? What? I don't get the joke. Uh, well, it's. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, like. Uh, it was just like a slight dig, but like literally, like um, like all the 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 thing about the weight bully, and uh, you know, all the other stuff is like what everybody always says. Like th that's why I was like, when I hear those things used in an argument, I'm like, okay, okay, I get that. I've heard that before, but elaborate on that. You get what I'm saying? Oh, you don't know what a weight bully is. No, I know exactly what a weight bully is, but to me, a weight bully sounds more of, a, of an excuse why a fighter is doing good or why another fighter lost. Oh no, he dominant. He he should. I don't see nobody beating him no time soon. Not at one sixty. I mean, uh, not at one sixty eight. Yeah, I, I, like you know, those other to, to me, to, for me, are very casual arguments. Fair enough. <laughs> Not have to agree with Piro there. I didn't ask you who the fuck you agree with. <laughs> God damn it! Fuck, 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 fuck. Hey, that's my opinion. Frank just came Free in. Smoke. Frank came in. Um, I'm gonna just go ride on Puro set. Like, come on, Frank. Like, do better. Do I'm just agreeing with him. I think the the weight bully thing is a casual argument. I mean, yeah, I, I could jump on you for that, but I'm just saying. The Mexicans gonna stick together, and you know what, Mark? I got oh, your you back. Mexican. This is awesome he bullshit. Mexican. He just said he's unbiased. I'm unbiased. Puro's lying though. He think Canelo Thank beat Puro. <laughs> I think Canelo beat who? Bavar. I who never said that Canelo beat Bavar. What are you talking about? What you, you say? said it the other day. You no, I did not. I never. I, that's never came out of my mouth. Not even, panel, capping, not even capping. I thought Canelo won. Literally, Canelo's the only guy I've ever said that thought that he won. I haven't heard anybody else say about Canelo. What was the fight we was talking about yesterday? I could be mistaken. Brother. What was the other fight yesterday we was talking about? You was like, it was just clear Mexican bias, bro. I don't have Mexican bias, bro. The only the only Mexican bias I have is that I, if I don't have like a like if I don't like if I don't have like a, a guy I'm rooting for, I'll root for the Mexican, and that's just because that's cultural, you know. But like, like literally to me, like the, having that type of bias is really like uh like 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 as a kid, yeah, hell yeah, oh yeah, that guy's gonna win. Why? Because he's Mexican. Yeah, that's a kid, you know. As I grew up, and I like to gamble. I don't like losing my money. I gotta call it down the middle. Honestly, I do have my bias. I mean, if you, if I, I do. So I, I mean, try to be objective. Biases, you know, yeah, like, take, I'll, I'll have to take all the time, but I, I don't believe my own bullshit. So you automatically root for the Latino? No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. I mean. Just the way I grew up. I mean, that's where I, the household that I grew up. We bought Chavez fights. We bought Oscar fights. You know, and occasionally Tyson. That's about it. Uh, you know, but I, I can't. You know, I studied boxing on my own, so I started to appreciate all fights, fighters, divisions. You know, not just Latino fighters. But if there's a bias, that's where it's gonna be. My bias is strictly Mexican and American fighters, to be honest. Mm. So you don't you don't have a favoritism towards a certain style of fight then? I do, yeah, I do. I definitely have the definitely towards the action fighter, a guy with power. You know, I want to see knockouts. But hey, there's a specific look, reason for that. And I say this: I have a preference for good fighters, game fighters, 
and other than that, I don't care. I don't care what country you're from, what, what, what race you are. If you show me skill, you show me ability, and you show me a willingness, if you show me a dog and a true gladiator spirit, you've earned my respect. But Mark, there's a Marcos, there's a definite reason for that. Why I feel the way I do and the bias I have. Would you would you care to share it? Would you, you, you okay? To you, right? I'm gonna share it. So Thank I don't you. know if, if you guys have sons or anything, but you know, I, I probably will not let my sons fight because I just wouldn't want it to. Would you want your I don't know, you don't have to say, but I have a if daughter, you did, I'm teaching her how to fight right now. You're teaching her how to box or fight? Martial arts, like just in general. Like yeah, like BJJ, she's gonna do some uh -huh. of that. But right now, she just, just basic punches. She's only two, man. She'll be three <laughs> in October. But yeah. right now, though, for as long as she can walk, when I say he ya, she punches. When I say ki ya, she kicks. Like on command. Like, and she's yeah. been working on that. She has her own little gloves now. She likes to hit the bag when I'm in the gym upstairs. So she'll go over there and hit the bag while she's up there with me. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I heard you say that. Yeah, she, she like it, though. She like hitting the bag. And I don't know if it, if Piro does, but uh, if I if like, I had to ease up for a minute because, I mean, she she just started hitting with anything to start with H, like <laughs> I, might, I might say, "Hey, I'm going to the store," and she just look at her mama, huh? Slap it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here, <I'm> like, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. Slap the shit out of my wife, and I was like, no, don't do that. Wow. And I looked over and I was like. I don't know if Piro has any. Uh, you don't have to say, but if you did, would you would you want him to fight to box? Well, I have a daughter, and I definitely want her to, to box if she if she likes it. You know, like if she don't like it, mm. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I mean, if I, if I had a son, I would definitely push him to do it. But like I said, if he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to do it. But I wanted to be a boxer at one point. That's why I would want my kids to be boxers. I have a daughter right now. You know, I'm working on my son, but yeah. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm slowly working to my point, but so I, st you know, I've looked, studied the martial arts. That was actually what I was first in. And you, you, are you familiar with Bruce Lee, guys? Bruce Lee? Of course. Uh, Mar Marcos? Yeah, it's either Marcos or Marquez tonight. Marquez. Um, yeah, you can call me Marquez <laughs> or call me Marcos. Um, Marcos. I know who Bruce Lee is. I'm 40 years old. Yeah, I know who Bruce Lee is, bro. Okay, so his philosophy was that, you know, you his ph main philosophy was in a fight, you want to end the fight as quickly as possible. That's just the number one rule of fighting. You know, like you didn't, you don't, you don't want to go to the ground. You just, you want to get it over. However, you got to end it with a punch. With just get it over, right? You don't want to, because how how do most fights devolve into wrestling? You know, right? <laughs> one guy swings and the one guy grabs, and then just becomes a wrestling match. Yeah, fights I, go to the ground in less than thirty seconds. I remember he, that's. <laughs> <laughs> in the army, they taught, yeah, in the army, that's why they taught us uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Like that was, like that was one of the things you learn in basic training. They don't teach you a whole bunch of shit. You ain't, you ain't about to make it uh, to the, uh, you ain't about to, you ain't about to get selected by the UFC with the shit they teach you. But they do teach you some bases because most fights go to the ground. They teach you how to get somebody bigger than you off, off uh -huh. of and things like that. But like, it's just to end it, like sure. just end it, like end the shit as quickly as you can with a choke, whatever you need to end up anyway. Uh, I know it's long winded, but the point I'm getting to is that if, you know, with my sons, I don't want, but if they did, they need to have power, okay? Because we're gonna see this trend in sports. These guys are gonna start retiring young and younger like we're seeing in football because of the damage, you know, uh, that they take. Uh, you know, most damage in boxing happens in the gym through the sparring. That's why these guys get all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I just, I just want to say one little part, real quick, pure, and I will pass right. No, back. no, no, you good, you good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to say this. Um, also, Frank, um, just asking, don't, don't you? I believe that another reason that the guys are retiring early too, because then now they get more money than ever too. That it's, yeah, it's enormous. That that'll make you say, you know what? I think I want to do broadcasting. I'm tired of getting hit in the face. You know what I mean? I can make six figures just broadcasting. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. Go in there and take punches to the head. So, what's up, G Funky? Shout out to my guy, G Funky Box. The ACP is spending causing panic. Shout out to y'all. Um, yeah, but that's why I think that's another reason why guys retire earlier. It's because of the money. Great point. And Great also, point. And, and also advancement in technology and medicine. 
where people guys are going to get uh, MRIs and CAT scans now on a regular in the off season. They're not they're not just fighting. Plus, they're not fighting uh, as much. People are more cognizant of hey, look, I don't want to be shaking and 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 can't talk once I get older. I think these got that. Seeing Muhammad Ali, how he turned out, and seeing their their all their legends, and and then seeing most of them are broke, they're like, no, 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 I'm not gonna be doing this shit forever, you know, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna invest my money. These guys are buying real estate. Mm -hmm. They're just they're just thinking far ahead. They're getting those MRIs, those CAT scans. They doing those runs on the broadcasting, and and yeah, they they if not that, they're doing their own podcast now and learn how to monetize their celebrity outside of the boxing ring more than ever especially due to social media so i think that's another reason why guys are retiring earlier but i'll pass the mic up here yeah oh no but but and so what i was saying about if that they do want to box they have to have power and um if they don't have power they're not i won't give them my blessing to fight they need to i want them to get knockouts i, I if they wanted to box i'm not going to teach them how to box or how to, i mean just kind of some of the basic things uh but I don't want them fighting 30, 40 fights, hundreds of rounds of sparring because they don't have the power. Like we just seen, I mentioned that kid, Gabe Flores. He did not have power and it showed. And it, and he's, how old are the kids? How old are your boys? Uh, they're four and two. Oh, well, how would you know if they don't have power if you let you put them? No, in? I'm just, I'm already, I'm already planning that, you know, because I watch a lot of boxing. So they, they like boxing, but one day they'll want to go to the gym. Um, but I won't let them fight until, you know, I can teach them to see if they have they can knock kids out because I'm not going to have them boxing. Um, unfortunately for me, the um, it power, the, as they say, power is not everything. Unfortunately, also, Mark, like you're saying, it, it, it's inevitable for a fighter that, that dedicates themselves to fighting, especially if they fight at a high level to avoid not getting some type of damage because they take shots to the face. Unfortunately, I think um, at this point in time, and for me, I think I believe it's the coaching because a lot of the coaching is dying out. Uh, when you don't have power, you have to literally perfect the art of boxing, which is hit and not be hit. You get what I'm saying? And unfortunately, I think we see a lot of fathers teaching their sons how to box. Uh, a lot of like um, trainers that are not experienced in in teaching their 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 uh, their uh, pupil when they get to a certain level, how to fight at that elite level. They used to have that before. Like, like literally Floyd Mayweather, when, once he lost his power, like he, it, it didn't matter because he literally perfected, you know, his defense, you know, um, uh, his counter punching. You get what I'm saying? Like he, he didn't have to rely on his power his whole career. Interesting. Um, Excuse me, I'll be right back. All right, yeah. Uh, Tony, um, did you want to reply to that? I got a question from the chat. You can answer it if you want to. He said, uh, do you guys think uh, Guillermo Rigondeau has done enough to qualify for the Hall of Fame? Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Rigondeau. How many divisions? Uh, 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 let me pull a uh, uh, Rigondeau. How At least three. I want to say three or four off the top of my head. Let me see. Rigondeau. Let's see how many uh, he is former unified champ. Okay, two weight classes. He was unified at WBA, WBO, in the ring magazine at Super Banner Weight from 2013 to 2017. And he had the WBA Banner Weight from 2020 to 2021. Mm, two divisions. I don't, I, I gotta see it. I mean, he did win, like, he is a two, didn't he win two gold medals? Hell yeah, he's a two time gold medal. It's 2000, 2004. Gold medals in the world champion, man. You got to put them in there, bro. You just got to put them in there. I mean, national championships. Like when you just pull them up, he's nothing but gold medals. And um, the championships, All I right. mean, some of these shits right here. Uh, uh, the Central American, Caribbean Games. It might not mean nothing to you. It meant something to somebody. He got a gold medal. Pan American Games. He got the gold. World Cup. So, based body. on accomplishments. Yeah, he, yeah, he got a lot of. He got 2005, 2006, 2002, all gold world championships. Um, at Belfast, 2001, the gold. Um, 2005 in Miami, um, gold. Then the Olympic Games in the, in Sydney, gold. Athens, gold. Went to the pros, became a champion. Unified, became the lineal champion. I mean, with the yeah, the Ring Magazine champion. Then um, yeah, unified again at another division. Yeah, I think he did enough to qualify, bro. 
Yeah, I, I, I got it. I'll, I'll let the chat answer. I'll let the, uh, the rest of the panel answer. Me personally, yeah, man, it's just he's just so accomplished. He, from an amateur to a pro, you got to give it to him. Right, if you take that into account. And then he def he was a defector, so he came over late. Yeah, 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 he did defect. Come so are we taking all those accounts? Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, you know, the, the standards get less and less every year for every sport. So, you know, is he first ballot? I don't know. But eventually, yeah, he'll probably get in. Yeah, eventually again. I think he should be first ballot. I I, I fuck with Rico. I seen people in there. I don't think they did. They got his. They don't. Their trophy shelf don't look like his. There's some people in there. Their trophy shelf don't look like his, bro. From amateur to the pro. Yeah, Piero, you back? Yeah, I'm back, sir. I'm back. I'm right here. Question was: Is Rigo a Hall of Famer? I, I, I'm sorry. Say it again. Rigandow. Rigandow. Okay. What about him? Hall of Famer. Of course. Of course. First ballot. I, I agree. Uh, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, Arturo Gaddy's in there, so right, right. I mean, we discussed this a little bit. I don't know if it was on this channel or another channel. We discussed it a little bit. It's the Hall of Fame, you know, it's not the all time great. Every month, bro. We do it every month, Piero. <laughs> I mean, it's called the Hall of Fame. It's not called the all time great fame or the all the all time the all time great uh, museum. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, so arguably you are an all-time great once you in there, right? Uh well, God, he's not an all-time great. He's in there uh, to Frank's point. Some would say he is because I, I, uh, I would say then that that person doesn't know what they're talking about. God bless Arturo. God. No, God bless him. Yeah, God bless him. Yo, he has one of the craziest stories, man. Right? So that shit is still blowing my mind, bro. Um, okay, he was a champion in two divisions. Um, had the IBF Junior Lightweight from 95 to 98, three-year run. I ain't mad at that. WBC Super Lightweight 2004 to 2005. So, Is Tank a Hall of Famer? Tank Davis? Not yet. He's a three-division champion. Not yet, though. I mean... Did he have did he have the world title or do he have the regular belts? Y'all got me. But see, that's the thing though, that like literally like people will forget about that eventually in time. Yeah, they'll forget. Um That's what I'm saying. You like you gotta judge them by what they did, you know, what they did in their whole career, not just by titles. You get what I'm saying? Who they beat, you know, like if they moved up in weight, like uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like if they beat somebody they weren't supposed to. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but Gotti had like what, fifty eight fights or some shit like that though, didn't he? He did, he did, and, and he's a he's a very worthy champion, and he's a, he's um I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say he's a very worthy champion. I love I love Arturo Gatti. Obviously, his style was very exciting, and um, that's why I think he's in the Hall of Fame because he made a stamp in boxing. I wouldn't call him one of the all time greats, go. you know, because he just he he was just right on the cusp. You know, he just he just lost to the best. You know, You're talking about Gatti, right? Gatti, yes, sir. But but the fight itself though are like classic. Fight. They're they're like fights you people go back and still watch today, right? Or no? Yeah, I would agree. But th see, that's the thing, though. Everybody has their own like uh, criteria on what makes a Hall of Fame fighter. Like to me, the greatest fight I've ever seen in my whole life is between Chico Corrales and um and Jose Luis Castillo. But they're not in the Hall of Fame. They're in the Nevada Hall of Fame. They just got inducted. But I mean, they're not in the actual like real one. Oh man, I'm about to end this show. I looked up, man. We got almost 100 votes on the survey. We ain't even got 40 likes. I'm out of here, man. Peace. I'm out of here, man. Y'all killed me tonight. I was like, what? Y'all ain't even hitting the like button? Hell no. Nah. Um, final thoughts, man. I'm out of here, yo. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, man. I mean, we just want to see exciting fights. I think that's all it amounts to. Um, you know, Floyd said himself, the uh, the biggest rivalry in boxing is a Mexican versus an African-American. That's what Floyd said himself. And that's a great point, Frank. And I was going to make this point earlier when, but when there were, everybody else was on the panel. Um, the reason that they have so many great fights, the American and the Mexican, one, geographical location. But two, uh, a style is ever evolving. Like literally, the Mexicans had to evolve their style to compete with with the United States or American style of fighting. If you get what I'm saying. Hmm. All right. Well, I see y'all on the next one, man. Um, y'all got anything y'all want to plug and promote? Before I let y'all go. 
Uh, no, just thanks for uh, having me. Another good show. Oh, yeah, you good, man. I'm about to do a members-only episode. I'm going to get a content to the people who fuck with me for real. Not, the, not these motherfuckers who won't even hit the like button because they don't like the title. Damn, that's cold. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they didn't click the like button because they didn't like the title. I probably got about 40 dislikes, though. But, um, yeah, man, 81 votes. Um, The survey says 53% says no, 47% say yes. Um, when it when it comes to the question of should black fighters start using the quote unquote Mexican style, yeah, man, it's just a little, uh, it's just a topic, man. Y'all motherfuckers be mad. They be like, uh, uh-uh. uh, <laughs> <Man, laughs> black man, don't you do that to us? Hey, look, and then they mad for real. They start they start taking away the likes. They taking their likes back. Ah, niggas taking their likes back. But but Marcos, let me <laughs> let me just say to that, look. It's always it's always just gonna be entertainment. It's entertainment. Boxing was created. Uh, it's always just marketing uh, from the beginning of boxing. You know, it's entertainment. That's why the ring is square. They for you to engage. People want to see fights. And also, it's uh, it's sometimes it's not about the skill of the man. It's the will of the man. That's why I love boxing so much. There you go. And and, and that's the perfect way to close the show out. Um, Frank, thank you again for your time and energy, man. Uh, we're gonna do this again tomorrow for the uh, the big sh- heavyweight showdown, Ortiz and Ruiz. Who you got on that, real quick? You know I'm biased. I'm going for the Mexican. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, not you're, you're Latino, so and they're both Latino fighters, right? Yes, Ruiz. Well, the Ortiz is Cuban, right? They're Latino. Uh, they don't care. They don't I don't care. consider myself Latino, but uh, I do support Latinos. Yeah, it's Latino. I consider myself Latino. Okay. Uh, all, Latin, all Latin America, you know. But anyway, Ruiz, I think he got the faster hands, fresher legs, and he's going to stop Ortiz. Wow. Okay. Well, I got a double bias because um, uh, Ruiz is American and he's Mexican. So uh, I'm definitely going to Andy, especially he is from California, Imper- Imperial Valley. You know, shout out to them. So yeah, I'm going to go to Andy, the younger fighter, fast hands. You know, uh, Ortiz looking like he's maybe on the on his way out, you know, but you know, let the, let the, let the best man win. Okay, all right. Well, we shall see, man. But thank y'all for your time and energy. I'm gonna start his members only post game show in about five minutes. Thank you, guys. I'll see you. Okay, on thank you. Thank you. Peace. 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 All right, man. Damn, y'all motherfuckers, man. He wouldn't even hit the like button for your boy tonight. Oh shit! I got. I guess y'all got a little mad about the type of topic, huh? All right, y'all niggas ain't got a power though. These niggas taking their likes back. All right, I don't give a fuck. I'll take the episode down. That shit don't hurt my feelings. Fuck y'all. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Hey, look, man, it's been another. <laughs> yeah, I wanna hear that. Hey, look, man, it's been another great episode of Breaking Beats where we break down business entertainment art technology sports hey look i'm not ending the show because of that y'all for real look i was ending the show at two hours anyway i'm already 17 minutes over because we're gonna do the members only post game show right so um we're just gonna be over there just talking shit um so yeah 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 that's not the real reason i'm ending the show <laughs> i promise it's not hey look man sometimes when we talk about this boxing thing it can get a little hot a little heavy people be arguing we'll be beefing sometimes even in the chat on the panel um Oh, shit. Before I do that, let me do this. Got to do this. I didn't do that at the beginning of the show, but let me do this quick roll call. Shout out to all the members, man. Without you guys, the show would not be the show. It would not be the show. So I'm very humble and grateful, and I appreciate you all. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your, your support. Let me do this quick members-only roll call to all the neighbors in the neighborhood. Let's run it through. Um, like I said, man, you guys make the show special. Um, Lisa Bells, what up? That guy Eclipse 330. What up? Cooking with the champ. What up? On the mic with Terrence Bailey Singer. What up? New Media Today USA Boxing. What up? HLD. What up? Cooking with Sir Senior. What up? Matty Yoel. What up? Deuce Times. What up? Brandon Washington. What up? Born Supreme. What up? Karma Serene. What up? Ace Retro. What up? Lady Shan Dundum Season. What up? Dub Right Side. What up? Boxing Lounge. What up? The Sweet Sa- the sweet Science Examiner. That's my boy Tank, the Sweet Science Examiner. He's the architect. What up? Puro. What up? Thanks for rocking with me on the panel, too, Puro. 
NHLD. I appreciate y'all. Frank as well. What up? Um, D Bevel the Champ. What up? Uh, Rob G Films. What up? And of course, my good brother Derek Lincoln. What up, gangsta? Man, I appreciate y'all time. Appreciate your energy. Sometimes when we talking about these topics, you get a little hot, get a little heavy. People be arguing, be beefing. Always remember this, homie. I built this shit, me, brick by brick. And I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk. Or another Mexican talk. <laughs> Drive, motherfucker. This that squad sound. <laughs> Subscribe. I don't care how many subscribers he has. Support him. So he made all this possible. He made this possible. Nah, Dr. Mark, God made it possible, and so did viewers like you. Hey, yo, y'all check me out um tomorrow, man, for the Ruiz versus Ortiz card. Everybody else, um, I'll see y'all on members only in five minutes. Let's get it.